tonight at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia for the season opener of the Georgia Southern Eagles. They're hosting the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils here on CSS. I'm Mark Bryant, very happy to be with you tonight and also very happy to have as my broadcast partner again this season, Mr. Tracy Ham. Good to be with you again, Mark. And this, this should be a joyous occasion, a very exciting evening, the season opener, the home opener, but there is something somber that surrounds the mood tonight with the passing of coach Irk Russell. It certainly is, Mark. I think um, at this time of the year, everybody get excited about football, but to lose an icon like Irk Russell at this time of year is really heartfelt throughout the community as well as the university. Of course, co of course Coach Russell restarted this program. He was the coach that began the new Georgia Southern football after 40 years of not playing. and. All he did was win three national titles <laughs> and go undefeated in his final season. Such a tremendous legend, such a tremendous man, and, and a great motivator. And uh, his motto of just do right is one that uh, still permeates this program. But now it's time to move on with another season. A new year, a new coach, a new offense. Coach Brian Van Gorder, and he's expecting some really good things out of this club. Certainly is. Uh, coach Russell will be sorely missed. Brian Go Van Gorder ushered in a new era, and it'll be answered. A lot of questions surround what's going on with the program now, and a lot of them be answered tonight. And of course, Coach Van Gorder, a defensive-minded coach with a lot of defensive experience, and so one of the great things he does when he comes in, he changes the offense, the triple <laughs> option that's been here for a quarter century. So it's a whole new look, and uh, a lot's going to depend on the quarterback, and they're going to look on the shoulders of Travis Clark, a transfer, to get it done for the Eagles. Well, I think what excites Van Gorder about Clark is that he has played in college football before and I think when you take a young man straight out of high school and put him on the, in a college environment it's tough on him and that's why Travis has essentially won this starting job tonight. And of course Travis comes from Southern Miss and they want him to stay healthy and stay back there because behind him he's got a few freshmen uh, to so uh, there's not a lot of experience on the depth chart for the Eagles at quarterback. On the other side of the ball the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils and their coach familiar with Statesboro. Yeah, Coach E. Certainly McErnie is certainly familiar with this environment. He knows this area. He was on staff here, so he's very familiar. I think he knows he catches Georgia Southern at the very time that it can be beat. Yeah, Coach Jeff McInerney and his Blue Devils taking on the Georgia Southern Eagles here in Statesboro. Stay tuned. This should be a wild one right here on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia, and a crowd electric right now because they know their season is about to begin, and every season at Georgia Southern is a season full of promise because they expect national championships in Statesboro, Georgia, and that's the kind of expectations that make you lose a coach with a winning record like Mike Seawalk. It has happened before, loss of coach previous to Seawalk. Um, Tim Starr was to a, had a winning record and was fired also, so it's a lot of expectations that comes out of uh, beginning the season at Georgia Seven. Yeah, it, uh, you can win games, you can make the playoffs, but expectations that high, hard to meet, hard to keep up with, and we'll see if Coach Van Gorder has got it in him to uh, to rise to those expectations. What is what is your take on Coach Van Gorder? Well, he's a football guy, first of all, and what I mean by that is he knows the X's and O's of football. Uh, he'll make some mistakes because he's his first year coaching. Now, you can't take anybody, any. Um, position and put them from assistant to head coach without the reality of they're going to make some mistakes. But at the end of the day, he's a football guy. He understands how to stop people on defense. Uh, he understands how to get a group of young men to get on the same page and play the game. You cannot not do that and coach at Jacksonville and coach in the SEC. So he has a he has a good football mind. The Eagles are taking the field to the roar of the crowd. Here at Paulson Stadium, one of the finest facilities you're going to find. And it's a bit of a steamy evening, but as the sun goes down, should cool down a few degrees and uh, make for some really nice football. Yeah, it is a great football evening as the Gene Bishop Fieldhouse stands out in the end zone there. And you can just see the changes and, and what is the program is, where it's headed. And I tell you what, you can't find a better facility to play it in one double-A. Mark, you're absolutely correct in that assessment. And so the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils from the Northeast Conference, champions of that conference in 2004 and 2005, are going to kick off to the Eagles. 
Number 90 for the Blue Devils is Ryan Heaney, and the season has begun. Returning the kick back past the 20. Number four for Georgia Southern, a familiar name, Jason Foster. We called his number a lot last year as the quarterback. Yeah, I tell you, Jason Foster moved from quarterback to receiver. I think as long as they find ways to get him the ball, uh, people expect and know Foster as to be one of the most exciting players in this conference. Well, now we look to Travis Clark behind center and the new offense of the Georgia Southern Eagles. First and 10 from their own 20. A handoff left side is going to go to number 28. That is Chris Covington. Covington the starting tailback. Covington is matched with Reddick in the backfield. Dusty Reddick, his fullback. They will carry the mail most of the time, but there, there is good depth at running back for Georgia Southern. There's Coach Van Gorder. Certainly, I think Travis Clark is the guy that's under the, under the spotlight the most uh, tonight. Going to run a second play quickly as they come right up to the line. Clark, number 14, under center again, calling out the signals and moving his players around as he adjusts. This time he's going to keep it with some play action. Rolling right, he finds his man. And he finds Scarborough, number 81. Hal Scarborough, the tight end, a junior. I think that's the biggest change for the fans is watching a tight end. Uh, we always moved our tight ends down to tackles. And so that's a big change for them. And then watching just a fullback, a true fullback, I think they'll have to get used to uh, a lead blocker in this new scheme. I formation again for Georgia Southern as they continue to hurry up on third and one from just within their own 30-yard line. Covington again plows over the right side for a first down. And a, and a nice set of plays for the Eagles. Let's have a look at the starting lineup for the offense. There's your line right there of Williams, Green, Wayne, Estrada, and Orr, the big fellas up front. They will be backed up by Chris Covington and Dusty Reddick, as we said, lining up most often in the eye. The tight end Scarborough, McCutcheon and wide receiver, along with Jason Foster. Clark, this time in the shotgun. Ball at the Eagles 33. He will hand off to Covington, who darts through, finds an opening the right side. He's to midfield. Great vision on the part of Covington. How quickly you forget the option as long as you're productive running the football. I think that's what the fans want to see. And I think that's why Brian Van Gogh was very, very happy with what he's doing. He knows what the offense he wants to run. And so the option is really going to be a, a mute situation as soon as they get to get themselves in a situation where they can show the offense. Well, the, the, the key to the option is deception. And you can do the same thing with a proper mix of play calling. And we've seen a good mix right out of the gate. Clark, again, play action, rolling right. Man on him, moves up, drops the ball. The ball is loose. It's picked up by Central Connecticut. That is number 31, Rod Muhammad. Ball loose one more time. No, the man is down. Blue Devils ball. They're, oh my goodness. That was a little messy. A little messy. <laughs> You know, but I think, Blue I think the things that everybody have to remember is that the option turned the ball over. I think we eventually will get past the comparison of the two and then just let them play football. Rod Muhammad is the one who's going to get his hands on that football. You watch Clark right here. He's got a man on moves up. And as he tries to put the ball away, he just he fumbles it out of his hands. Just an just a early mistake by a quarterback who is, has not gotten into his rhythm yet. He'll get into a rhythm. You know, I think our defense now, this is where, you know, this is his specialty. This is what people would like to see is what is our defense going to do because we've given up points in the past. Quickly lining up Aubrey Norris, the quarterback, and flags fly before they even get a snap off. Let's have a look at this. The defense was calling for a lot of noise from the Paulson Stadium crowd, and they got what they were looking for. Officials conferring. As the official sort out this flag as officials do when they sort out the flag they have to always sort it out they're going to wave it off as a matter they, of fact they sorted it out in their own way I, <laughs> I was just about to say i like the mix that we were doing on offense a little play action a little run they were throwing on running downs and running on throwing downs is what you like to see and then uh, early season mistakes you know i think that's the advantage that central connecticut state has over georgia southern now because they play the game and they've gotten rid of some of their early game bugs and we'll see if our defense can hold up um, to giving up the ball in your own end. 
The Blue Devils working with a short field and a great stop by the defensive front for the Eagles. The yeah. flag on the field. The Central Connecticut State Blue Devils attempted to get Justin Hairston uh, a seam, but there was nothing off. to have. Might have got us offside. As officials sort out their flag once yes, again, Mark, as officials do when they throw a flag. Our referee is Gerald Trexler, and he and his crew say, yes, it is offsides on Georgia Southern and a break for Central Connecticut. And I think Coach Van Gordon knows one thing. If you're going to have a good defensive ball club, you have to stop the run. And as you can see, even with the penalty, I don't think he's going to allow them to run the football. And so it'll be an interesting take to see if we can stop the run. Great push up front. You, you have to be encouraged by that. Certainly, if you're a defensive coach, you want to see your front four get upfield, and you want to see you, your defensive line play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. So again, it will be Norris under center. He sends his man JoJo Freeman in motion. Hands off to Hairston. He finds open space on the left side, bumps off one tackle, and gets down to the 10. If by any means Jordan Southern thought this was going to be an easy game, I think they've quickly found out that this is going to be a very physical, they run the football, and they run it well. And so it'll be a very physical ball game. As you can see, we got knocked around there, and I think that we, we got to buckle up our 10 scraps and see if Jordan Southern can't stop the run. The Blue Devils beat Marist last week, 34-6. They ran and ran and ran again. But uh, we've been told to expect a little bit more passing than they had last week, mainly because they were trying to play in a gale last week. That's Harrison finding an opening on the right side. You got to like Harrison. He really does a good job of picking his hole. He's a very patient runner, and he picks his holes well. And when he sees it, he darts vertical. And that's that's really, that's that's professional kind of vision. That's, that's what you see in NFL running backs. Certainly is. You've got very good patience. And that also means he trusts his offensive lineman. And so with that, it will be second and seven from the seven. Second and goal to go for the Blue Devils. Aubrey Norris will line up in the shotgun. The Blue Devils in the white shirts and the royal blue. Norris moves up under center. He fakes the handoff to Harrison, looking to his right side. He's got Freeman. Freeman will be down at to the two-yard line, third down and goal to go. I like Central Connecticut State play calling as well. They've shown run, run. They've sprinkled a little play action pass. Um, Georgia Southern defense react really well to that play. So you like to see uh, the offensive staff is really mixing up, but the defenses are not far behind. You know, we were here for three games last year, and Georgia Southern often had kind of slow starts but, but they usually got their lead early and then pulled away right now they're looking at uh, getting behind right out of the, the start of this one 10 minutes to go in the opening quarter ball stuffed in the middle and that's going to set up a fourth down play the defense really was able to rise up on third down they did a good job you like to see that I, I think this ball club has been through a lot of adversity and then just to fumble the ball right out the gates after being successful and then putting themselves in a very adverse situation they've reacted well uh, you can see the kids have come to play for georgia southern and they did a good job of just going their neck and stopping them from getting a touchdown potentially the Blue Devils go into a huddle. They have not yet shown whether they're going to go for three or six on this one, but they're running out of play clock. So they may be going for three. Take the penalty, get a better angle. Get a better angle. Good coaching. Good coaching. You like to see early ball game. You like to see good, solid coaching. Uh, very good decision. Take the five yards, get you a better angle, and give yourselves a better opportunity to make it a field goal. There's Coach Van Gorder. He certainly didn't want to open up his era here at Georgia Southern with a with a fumble and going down a score, but they did keep him out of the end zone. Let's see if they get the field goal. Number 90, Ryan Heaney kicking for Central Connecticut State. It is good. The first score of the game is a three-pointer for the visitors, the Blue Devils. With 9-12 to go in the first quarter, they were given a very short field. I'm sure they wanted six and seven out of that, but uh, they'll take the three-point lead. If you're Coach Van Gorder, you've got to be happy with where you are right now. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 9-12 to go in the opening quarter of play, and the crowd 
Well, they're rising to their feet. They're trying to cheer on their Georgia Southern Eagles. The Central Connecticut State Blue Devils have the 3-0 lead, and there's the kickoff. Raja Andrews will field it at his own goal line and come forward past the 10 and 15, out to about the 20, spinning and down at the 21-yard line. Well, if you're the Blue Devils, Mark, you got to be a little concerned, but you're happy because you're on the road. you got to lead. You, as a coach, you're probably concerned because you didn't put the ball in the end zone, but you'll take a 3-0 lead on, a, on the road. You'll take that every time on the road with the three-point lead into the first quarter. For the Blue Devils on defense, up front, Green, Murphy, Douglas, and Graywax. They're backed up by Monj, Stimmel, and McGuire. In the backfield, Benson, Bailey, Farad Muhammad, and Anthony Wilson. Muhammad, of course, was the one who recovered the fumble that set up the field goal. Clark under center. Hand signals to his wide receivers in first and 10 from his own 21. Devils showing blitz. Hold their positions and stay right on the play. No gain. In fact, he may have lost a yard. The Blue Devil defense has shown that they're very, very tough. I think that that's going to be uh, the, the line of scrimmage has not been won by either side of the ball. Both defensive line have dominated the game thus far. Um, and I think that's going to be the key. Which offensive line can establish themselves as dominating the other defensive line? There's Travis Clark, the quarterback, lining up to his right at wide receiver. He's got Jason Foster and Darius Smiley the uh, first and second string quarterbacks from last year as wide receivers. He throws right between Foster and Smiley. Well, the hard, problem, the hard problem to is say, if that, is that Foster's ball? Or I, I think it was Foster's ball, but it was the defensive lines made the decision for him because they came in and hit him immediately after he was trying to release the ball. So their defensive line is really getting after it. Devon Douglas has been hard to stop for us up front. The Eagles remain in a hurry up and they've got third and ten now with under eight minutes to go in the opening quarter of play. Clark in the shotgun. Reads the defense and steps back. He's looking downfield. His first and second options weren't there and he throws an interception in the middle of the field. 31 yard line, no Eagles in sight. Not an Eagle in sight. Just misread the defense if he'd have looked out in his right flat. If he'd have looked out in his right flat, he saw his tight end wide open, but I'm sitting here and he's down there. You could see Clark look off his possible first and second options to the left and then shoots to the middle. He's trying to force it further downfield to Foster, but the ball's nowhere close. Even if he'd have got it past that defender, it was another defender in front of the receiver, so he threw in the teeth of the defense that time. So if you're the Blue Devils, your average field starting field position is, well, you're looking at it. It's about the 30-yard line of the Georgia Southern Eagles. You know, I, I think it, the defense have to really do a good job of limiting the points here as well. This time it's a new ball carrier, not Hairston, but number 25, Corey Harge. Flag on the field. Harge from Amherst, New York. A lot of players from the New England states in the Northeast on Central Connecticut State, as you'd expect. Holding on the offense, let's have a look at the Blue Devil offense. Wranglin, Pinheiro, Nutt, Krug, and Jesenowski on the offensive line. They're backed up by Hairston, Freeman, Grachowski, Roth, and Giovanni, and uh, they shuttle those backs in and out a lot. So we'll see several different names back there, just like we saw uh, Harge taking over for Hairston on that last play. But they're going to get backed up on this one. Good news for Georgia Southern. And one of the few things possibly to go wrong for the Blue Devils here in quarter number one. Well, they're getting a steady dose of two different running backs right now, and their, their styles are different. Freeman is a very patient, uh, slashing type runner, and he's um, just been very patient. The offensive line averages about 6'3", three, about 3-plus. Three so they're really big up front, and they when they get their hat on you, it's hard to get off. I formation, three wide receivers. It will be a handoff again. Up the gut to hard, still churning. Penalty, what penalty? He gets it down to a, a second and two situation. And the wind's not blowing here, and that no. run is a steady down of running the football. So Jordan Southern um, has been the first group of defensive line not been able to stop the line, handle the line of scrimmage. So uh, Central Connecticut State is doing a good job of handling the line of scrimmage now. We'll call it second and three from the 24. Norris hands off to Harge again. Nothing doing this time. Hits a wall and gets dropped. Gang tackle there by the Eagles up the middle of the line. 
But Mark is early to go out on a limb and say to play of the game, but this is an enormous play for Georgia Southern. Third down here to be able to stop them on third down. A really big play for Central Connecticut State. They got a penalty and they still in the position to uh, get a first down. So big play in the game. Might not be the play of the game for the entire game, but this first quarter is the play of the quarter. Norris gets the snap. Play action looking downfield to his right. Throws behind his receiver. He was looking for Freeman, but no good. And that's going to push it to fourth down again. And let's see if if Heaney has the distance from here. Norris looked like he slipped on the throw, and he might have hurt himself uh, doing that, doing the process. You can see him limping. Looked like he maybe uh, overextended his knee a little. So he looked like he had to do a little work on his leg there. Maybe going back to look for the trainer or at least, some, at least something to drink back there. And here goes Heaney. He is going to try what... Something is wrong for <laughs> they're short a player. Or the they're going to change it. They're changing it to a fake. And it didn't work at all. Orchestrated confusion. Had me confused for a moment there. It was a good effort, but it comes up short. The Blue Devils try to make it appear as if they are out of position. The Eagles weren't buying it. We're not buying it at all. And the defense is excited because they have kept Central Connecticut State out of the end zone twice. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Covington, he's out to the 40. Looking good, Covington, out, uh, right out of the start of this game. Chris Covington running strong. Well, I, I, you can see that the offensive line is really starting to pick it up on that series. I think they probably got their ear full on the sideline. And then the Southern Park just have to settle down and continue to understand that this is it. The defense is playing well and to get themselves in a rhythm, get the offense in a rhythm. Travis Clark transferred to Georgia Southern from Southern Miss. He's going to hand the ball to Covington again, who works the right side again. Gain of about three. I tell you, Mark, both sides are just playing real power football. You're seeing isolation where the fullback is isolated on the linebacker, where it's double team on the three technique as the fans will see the guy lined up on the guards being double off uh, up to the linebacker. So it's real hard knock football where this Southeastern Conference kind of football where it's my guy's better than your guy, and we're going to prove it for uh, the course of the game. Second down. Just over five minutes in the first quarter. Covington again running right. This time he eludes the first tackler, gets into Central Connecticut State territory, down to about the 42. And I, I think that them not getting that first down really deflated their defense. They've got two big turnovers in Georgia Southern end. They only got a 3 nothing lead to show for it, and now they got to come back out on the field, and Georgia Southern is, is really starting to pick it up on offense. That eye formation once again with Covington back there. Reddick is his fullback. Covington looking very good so far in this game. Clark has two receivers to his right and no one lined up wide left. He will give to Covington right up the middle. Who gets a fair gain? He'll push it out just inside the 40-yard line of the Blue Devils. And, and what the opposite staff is basically doing is helping. They're just helping the quarterback out now they're saying look we're going to help you don't have to win this thing by yourself let us establish a line of scrimmage now but when we do do the play we do have play action take care of the football uh, keep in mind Travis Clark of course with the fumble and then the interception first two drives of his Georgia Southern career not too good and so the third shaping up a little bit better as they have finally dented Blue Devil land here it will be Covington one more time and he's still running well inside the 30. And I, I tell you, you know, I don't want to be too hard on Travis because I played the position. I've had a few turnovers in my time as well. And the key to being a successful quarterback, as you see Covington running the football here, is not losing your cool, keeping your composure, and letting guys on the field know, hey, I'm your leader. I made a mistake, but we're going to overcome those mistakes, and we're going to get ourselves back on track. First and 10 at about the 30-yard line. Travis Clark under center. He gives to Covington, this time to the left. And he pulls away from first contact and gets down to the 20. And certainly Travis Clark has been the best offensive player on the field today for Georgia Southern. He's done a good job of running through, through tackles and carrying the football. Look, he's a little winded here. Coving and probably have to give him a break soon. Yeah, Chris Covington, yes, number 28. Yes, he is Covington. a sophomore, 5'11", 190. And, and he's going to come out for a breath, and he deserves it. He gets an ovation from the crowd. 
Certainly, and the people in, at Georgia Southern understand rushing the football. They understand the quality of a back carrying the load as he's carrying it. Sophomore Melvin Greer comes in in Covington's place, and he will get the football on the first play. Good move back to the inside and a first down. Second and short, and he would not have gotten it if he had stayed with his original track. Good job to cut back and find positive yardage. And if you're going to run the football, you've got to keep fresh backs on the field. And you know what's amazing about that? We rotate the backs, keep them fresh, but we keep the same offensive linemen out there. So uh, you'll see that certainly Covington is the man at this point in time, and he needed a breathing, and good backs don't stay off the field long. Yeah, because it was only one play. Covington is back out there. 2.45 left in the first quarter. Georgia Southern still looking to get on the scoreboard. Clark to Covington. He's going right. Smashed by a pair of Blue Devils and dropped. In on the tackle, number 23, Rob McGuire is one of them. The Covington bounces right back up. It's kind of different seeing Smiley and Foster receive it because we covered them last year, as you said, and we're just, you know, just trying to get accustomed to some of the changes. And right now is a great time for play action. I think I wouldn't be surprised if Georgia Southern didn't play action to football here as well as they've been running it. They've got Reggie McCutcheon lined up wide right. Clark got his backs in the eye once again second and seven he's going to give to Covington who's got a little room it closed up quickly he'll get down to the 10 and when you get in this part of the field and Georgia Southern fans are not used to this but the tight end becomes a very viable uh, entity down here because the tight end is when you have that two defensive look scheme where the two safety cover the outside you have to watch for the tight end down the middle here Foster and Smiley will come on Greer will be Lined up as the only back behind Clark. Covington has come off the field. So the Eagles spread it out. Clark fakes the handoff. He's still got it, but his man is not open. He's got to keep it. No, now he unloads. Overthrown and out of the end zone. Well, had Travis Clark continue to roll that on that series, he would have found himself a clear path to the end zone. But he pulled up to throw the football. Or at least he, a first down. He at only needed four. a first down because he got the, the blitz came from that side, but the blitz went inside the blocker. And had he continued to roll, he would have a great look. But that'll come as he continued to play and get an understanding where the spots are on the field for him. So now we're going to find out if Georgia Southern can tie this score. Jonathan Dudley is going to try for the three. Kick is up. It is no good and so the Eagles are still scoreless on the day you know there's a lot of different ways I thought this game might go and this wasn't one of them. this is not one of them um, the good thing about it is they changed the field position I think the offense has to be happy they're not satisfied but they got to be somewhat happy they took the ball from there in the field and put it up had a chance to score didn't score but they changed field position all right, folks, it is 3-0. The Central Connecticut State Blue Devils on top of the Georgia Southern Eagles. You are watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. It is left in the first quarter of play here at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. Central Connecticut State, the visitors from the Northeast Conference here. The Blue Devils lead the Georgia Southern Eagles of the Southern Conference 3-0. The crowd in full voice getting the Georgia Southern chant going. Yeah, now, what, what a nice evening it's turning, it's turning out to be yes. for football fans. I'm not sure Coach Van Gorder is as happy as the fans are at this point, but um, if you're Central Connecticut State, you've got to be somewhat pleased with where you are. You understand that you could be further along in the process, but on the road, up by three, had an opportunity to go get a couple scores. So they're in a good position. If you're just joining us, folks, Georgia Southern got the opening kickoff didn't move it very far before they fumbled the ball away. The Blue Devils wound up getting a field goal off of that. Great job by the Eagle defense to keep them out of the end zone from the two. Georgia Southern gets the ball back, throws an interception. Short field again for the Blue Devils, but this time they get nothing out of it. A fake field goal attempt goes terribly awry, and <laughs> the Oscars and the Emmys were all handed out for the acting performances yeah. on that play. But, That's putting it nice yeah, too much. But, uh, but nothing doing. And then something different happens. The Eagles move the ball, move the ball all the way down the field. They miss a field goal, and that's how we're sitting here at 3-0 with the Blue Devils with the ball. Good job rolling to his left for Norris. He's got an open man. Contact made and dropped at the 36. 
helmets go flying and everything. Jason Earwood in on that tackle. When you run the football, play action become easy. It was a great run, a great situation where it looked, seemed to be a running down, but it was a great play action down. If you run the ball, when people expect you to throw it and you throw it when they expect you to run, you get plays like that. And that's why I was surprised about Georgia Southern in the last series that they didn't throw the ball but one time, attempt to throw it but once that series. Norris lines up under center. 43 seconds left in the period. Just a little power run here to the left. He finds space behind his blockers and pile up at about the 43. One thing you have to be careful about when the team comes into your backyard and you allow them success early, they get very confident as the game goes on. And you can see the confidence of the Blue Devils rising at each play that they're on the field. So Georgia Southern is in a situation here now where they really are calling their defense to not allow the field position to change. Justice Hairston was the ball carrier on that last play, and the Blue Devils seem content here to let the quarter trickle away three seconds and counting down so they'll change ends with the blue devils on top three nothing here in statesboro you're watching css your source for southeast sports get back to the football basics every friday night on css with live high school football pregame coverage begins at 7 p.m eastern spotlighting high school football from top schools around the southeast Stay tuned for the live CSS Game of the Week, followed by our post-game show. This is a big run for Hairston. Still going. We're talking high school football. The college stuff is going on in front of us. Remember, the live CSS Game of the Week, followed by our post-game show with scores and updates from around the region. But, wow, Hairston, another great play for what we're seeing is a really good back. Yes, a really good back running down the teeth of the defense right down the middle. And then when you, see, when you have a really good back, you generally got to – pretty good offensive line in front of you and their offensive line are becoming more than pretty good they're becoming a solid offensive unit justice Hairston this time it's going to be hand off to the up man Freeman number five what they've shown what Central Connecticut State the Blue Devils have shown is that they have the ability to run multiple formations but yet run the football is what they want to do and I don't think that was no masking because the win last week they are running football team <laughs> yes, they are and I think coach McInerney understands that if he's going to win ball games he got to be able to run the football and and the Georgia Southern fans are familiar with running the football just a different way but running the football is running the football and they're going to pass just enough to keep you honest and that's about it it looks like so far Norris takes the snap and rolls to his left Looks option, does not pitch, keeps it. He's got open space, and he should have a touchdown. Oh, ho Great individual effort. That was just a great individual effort by the quarterback. He did an excellent job. It was a run all the way. It was no, no chance of passing. As you see him rolling out here, never put the ball in the passing position. And Georgia Southern just missed tackles after tackles. So that has to be a concern for uh, the Georgia Southern defensive staff. Great job keeping the knees off the ground until he crossed the plane of the goal line. And so it is 9-0 Blue Devils. They'll try to tack on the extra point here. Impressive play, back-to-back -back plays by Hairston and Norris. The kick is up and good. It is now... 10 nothing the van the van gorder era not starting the way that any of the eagles want to see it as we are in the early second quarter and the visitors have the 10 nothing lead you're watching css your source for southeast sports it's 10 nothing central connecticut state in front of georgia southern and uh, the crowd getting a little restless they have seen their team pull off a bunch of good plays, but they haven't seen them string enough together to put anything on the scoreboard. Yeah, and I thought I think if the fans thought that this this was just one of them cupcake openers, they're sadly mistaken. This is a the Devils are a very good football team. The kick is away. Foster and Norris are back there. I'm sorry, Andrews. Andrews with the ball and out to the 25. So that is where the Eagles will try to gain some redemption here in this game. Now, I, I think that the, the Georgia Southern football staff, the players, the university, all have been put under some adverse situation. If you go back from when he, Coach uh, Van Gorder arrived on campus to where he's at now, uh, he's really put, put in some adverse situations. So this shouldn't be anything new to him or his players. Uh, what you want to find out about your players, how do you react to adversity? And so now they got an opportunity, we'll get an opportunity to see how they react to adversity. 
Chris Covington for the Eagles. They fake to him, and Clark rolls right. He will throw to his fullback, number 34, Dusty Reddick, the junior. It's a lot of similarities to the two teams' offense. You know, they want to run the ball, establish the line of scrimmage, run the ball, run the ball, sprinkle some play action, and they did exactly what the Blue, the Blue Devils did on their first series. When they got the ball, they play action because they've been running it effectively. So it'll be interesting to see how the game continues to play out. Covington dots the eye and he gets the ball this time. Space on the right side will get him out to the 35. It will set up a third and short. Covington had 80 yards rushing in the first quarter. In the first quarter, Trace, that, that's, he's on pace for a 320-yard game. <laughs> Clearly, um, Jordan Southern wants to run the football. And I think people thought that they were going to throw the ball all over the field. But I think Van Gordon understands football. I know he understands football enough to understand that you got to be able to run the football before you can even attempt to throw it. Big play, third and two at their own 35. Ball, it, oh, did he hold on? The possession is more so the question here than the yardage. They will lose yardage. They will keep the ball. It is fourth down. See, oh, I, trouble there. Yeah, and, I, and I think Covington is getting tired. And you know, when you've gone through all, the, as you see the replay here, and you go through the summer workouts, the winter workout, you carrying the ball, you're in a game excitement. You can see that he just simply took his eyes off the ball and that comes from fatigue and I think that you got to probably rotate them in a little more than what they're doing and that's what you see the Blue Devils doing they're rotating their backs in a little yeah. more. Eagles have already turned the ball over twice a third time here by the early second quarter <laughs> set up another short field I don't think the I don't think the Blue Devils are going to squander many more of those opportunities like they did at the beginning of the game and I think you see a better a better Blue Devil team right now than you saw those other two turnovers. Hairston attempting the punt return just won't get anywhere. He is swarmed over by the dark blue of Georgia Southern. It is 10-0 Central Connecticut State, and you're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Don't have the 10-0 favoring the Blue Devils. Aubrey Norris and his team come up to the line. 11-20 remaining in the first half. Norris immediately throws to his left. First man misses and still going. Good work and some positive yardage on first down for Central Connecticut State. As number four, Josh Roth gets the uh, gets the reception. And Roth did a good job of making defenders miss. I think if one thing that Jordan Southern may be concerned about is the, the missing of tackles. I think that's a sign of um, uh, a team not really totally focusing in because tackling, um, you really have to hone in and settle yourself to make tackles. And we have, I say we, are, sometimes you have to excuse me. It's hard not to say we. So I understand. But Jordan Southern has to do a better job of taking ta making Folks, tackles. Georgia Southern's only retired two jerseys, and one of them sitting next to me. So I understand where well, the man is coming from. If the crew from. in the truck gets mad at me, it's saying we, it's, <laughs> even when it slips. So you guys have to forgive me for that one. But Georgia Southern have to do have to do a, a, a good job of um, making tackles. And you can see inside there, they just now that's a better job of, of, of tackling the ball carrier then. Well, you know, we talk about missed tacklings, I, I, missed tackles, and, and, the, and the tackling problems. I think. They certainly have to be not just missing the tackles, but missing a linebacker here today. They've got John Mooring, who would be who is a senior leader on this defense, suspended for this game. What he would oh the pitch goes beyond Harge, and they lose big time yardage back to the 15. Did Harge even see that? It was it was high. It was wide. High and wide. And you got to just, eyes have to be just big. When you see the replay here, had a great scheme going at defense in inside. Jerry Southern really reacted well to that play. I don't think had, it, had he gotten it, it would have been a first down. But he reacted. The defense reacted well. Shaheen Solomon was the first to greet him after he, after Harge found the football. But a big loss on third down. Fourth and 17, and the Blue Devils will punt from their own one. The ball is away. It's a low one and goes out of bounds on the Central Connecticut State side of midfield. And certainly, to finish your point there, John Morin was a big it was a big loss for Joyce Southern. Um, certainly, his ability to tackle the football and his ability to make plays on defense was missed today. Still 10-0. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 10-0, 9-12 remaining in the second quarter. And the Georgia Southern Eagles offense under some pressure to get on the scoreboard. 
they will begin in Blue Devil territory. And the quick handoff to Covington, who zips through the right side and gets inside the 30. Another impressive run from number 28. I, I like the fact that the offensive staff has not panicked. They continue to stay with the game plan. It's too early to abandon your game plan. You're down 10. You're very fortunate to be down to 10-0. And you can see the offensive line continue to make holes uh, for Covington. He's done a good job of of going through the holes, but there have been some really big holes for him to run through. He's over 100 yards already today. First and 10 at the 30. He will get the ball again through the right side, gaping hole, and down just shy of the 15. That, that offensive line deserves a lion's share of the credit here today because he has over 100 yards. He has found giant holes to run in. Giant holes. I, I, I think I could have used you as my back a couple times with the hole being so big, Mark. Now, you might have not been over 100 yards yet, but I think you would have been past the line of scrimmage. They've done a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've done a really good job of maintaining composure and giving them holes to run through. Did I mention my trick knee? Okay, it's one. <laughs> it's first down. And Covington again. If it works, keep trying it. Gain of about two on that one. Well, I, I, I'm a little surprised. You said for keep word giving. I'm a little surprised because he's had just two great runs, and you know he's winded. He's been carrying the load. I think they have to give him a break or at least use him to play action in football. Now, as, as you can see, uh, coming up, we're going to show a quick replay here of him running the ball in the hole. And he just, there's nowhere to go. Even if he's fresh, there's nowhere to go on that play. But I would be surprised if we don't get a play action soon. Senior Devon Douglas brought him down on that one. It's been hard to bring down today. Second and eight. Play action to Covington. Roll to the left. Clark still has it. He's got a man right at the goal line. He's going to be down inside the one. Campaigning for the touchdown is number 18, Michael McIntosh. He will not. He will not get the score, but he will give him first and goal to go at the half yard line. Now Clark shows some real savvy there. I think in the old quarterback you'd have seen a running quarterback then I think that's what the fans have to get used to Clark has the ability to stick it in there sometimes they get you in trouble sometimes it doesn't that time he stuck it in there real nice and made a, a, a good football play Eagles need to score Clark under center sends a man in motion the handoff to Covington he leaps he's in I don't think you could have given it to anybody else with the workload Covington's been carrying this on this series, he's done a great job of carrying the football and to give him, to reward him, along with the offensive lineman, I thought that was a, a great drive for Georgia Southern. As you see him go over the top here, there was no doubt that they pushed the line of scrimmage past the goal line there. Lands on his head with that one. Trying the, um, the Mike Allstott dive, that power dive. You get that much weight and that much force going up in the air, it is hard to bring it down. Yeah, you can see how they reacted well to adversity. They got good field position from the defense making a stop as the extra point is good. And that narrows the gap to 10-7. Georgia Southern on the board, and they have to feel a lot better about this football game right about now. Yeah, I think not only the, the coaching staff and the players, but the fans. Uh, this. Now, Georgia Southern fans are spoiled, Mark. They're used to scoring in bunches with ease. And I think now they're ushering in a new era. Good to see them get on the board. Now they can relax. Georgia Southern can relax and play. I think Coach Van Gorder probably uh, just, just uh, reduced the weight on his shoulders by about a ton and a half. It was... It was it was starting to press down on him. You, you couldn't tell it by looking at him, though, could you? Because he just looked like he's just football minded. That's all he's concerned about is the fourth quarter is coming up. I want to remind you folks, get a fast, great debate of the hottest sports stories in the Southeast on Sports Night, weeknights at 6 and 11 p.m. Eastern Time, only on CSS. You'd be a great debater, Mark. You know, I, you would be a great guy to have debate, man. I'd, I'd be interested in listening to you do some of the sports debates that's out there. A debate? Yeah, like what are you thinking about? Uh, See, I, it's just, to, I, I don't know about debate. I think I, I think it, they, too often they just turn into arguments. <laughs> I don't know, a debate or argument is a fine line. <laughs> well, that was make, that's, that's what essentially would make a good debate, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so Georgia Southern now gets to kick off to Central Connecticut. And that's actually the first time today. Yeah, we'll see if Georgia Southern defense reacts to uh, what has happened by the offense, and then we'll see if the Devils' offense can just maintain their composure. Hairston is back, waiting for the football. He'll take it one yard deep in his end zone and launch out. He gets to the 15 and is met there by a few Eagles, including Diedrich Bynum. 
And I tell you, Harrison is just, when he gets to football, I tell you, he's so smooth. He looks like he, even in that put back on the 15th, but he runs the ball with a real ease. That's Renard Montford who is, shall we say, pumped up about, <laughs> about the situation right now. He is excited. The Eagles are getting fired up. They're feeling a little bit uh, a little bit better now, I think. And I think when you're on the road and you get in this situation, this, you'll learn a lot about your football club. Coach McInerney is about to learn a lot about his offensive ball club on this series here. First and ten. At their own 16, the Blue Devils will give the ball to Harrison, who piles through the middle for a short game. With these new sets, and, and I think people think that Judge Southern was confused in, but they really was not. When they hold up on the sideline, you don't know what personnel is coming in the ball game, So you have to stick out, stick certain personnel out there, and then once they de declare what personnel is on the field, then you will run off the personnel that you want to stay on the field. Now, this is the first ever meeting between these two clubs. And a lot of teams come into Paulson Stadium with, with a little intimidation. They've, they've heard this program, you know, they know this program has been strong for 25 years. Central Connecticut State's never been here before. They may have heard a few things, but they certainly haven't seemed intimidated by anything. And that I think that has a lot to be a tribute to Coach McInerney. He's been here. He had a chance to expound on what they were about to come into. And, uh, and, and essentially, not having them to have to prepare for the option certainly also helped. Uh, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what we're doing offensively now, but it's almost impossible to get ready for an option within a week. And that's why George Southern has so much success against uh, non-conference foes. That last carry was JoJo Freeman, redshirt sophomore from Lowell, Mass, and it sets up a third and short. Three backs for Norris, who is not going to go to that. Well, now he will. He throws to Hairston. That is an incomplete pass. It was a forward pass. Tried to get something going with his talented back there by finding him in space, but See, I didn't like that. the play call for that play because they had been doing a real good job of just downhill running the football there. That play had disaster written all over. Too many things going Too on. Too many things going on. You're on the road, play smash mouth football. You've been doing a good job playing smash mouth football with them, and then you get a little fancy and you have to be, you have to be, everything has to be done right in order for that play to work. And Georgia Southern have to make a mistake. Fourth and two now. Jason Foster is back to receive the punt. Kick is away. Foster moving up and to his left. Dodges the first man. He's going to try and get close to midfield. He'll come up a little bit short out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. Talking football returns with new hosts and a new attitude. Don't miss all the engaging discussions, player interviews, and live viewer calls. If you want to stay on the pulse of college football this season, tune in every Sunday at 8, only on CSS. Most punt returners would have caught that ball, but Jason Foster, and I think I, I, what i like to see George Southern offense do is at least let Jason Foster touch the ball um, simply because we've seen what he does when he has the ball in his hand. I think the more touches he gets, the more valuable he becomes to an offensive unit. Clark calling the signals and will hand off and turned around his Greer, and there's a face mask in there somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Certainly, and the Blue Devils defense just came out roaring then. I think they felt that they got to make a stand here on the road. Anytime you're on the road, your defense has to be your your game breaker. You got to be able to go out and stop people. Their defense has played really well. They gave up a drive there, but it was a short field. But they put themselves in, in great position defensively. And I, I think when you go on the road, you like to see that from your defense. They're going to mark this one off now. They didn't have to sort this one, though, did no. they? That was, that was kind of out in the open. Yeah. I think everybody got that one. It's going to be a five-yard face mask. And it, there it is. Davis has really wreaked havoc on the offensive line for Joy Southern. He has really controlled his side of the line of scrimmage. And I think if Joy Southern want to have success, they're going to have to run away from him. Clark steps up and now backs into the shotgun. He's got Greer next to him. McCutcheon wind up, lined up wide to the left. First down and five from just inside Blue Devil territory. Greer will shift sides. Throw is to McCutcheon on the left. He is brought down rather quickly by Anthony Wilson, DB number 17. Now, now George Southern made a very subtle move here. They've gone from under the center to the shotgun and uh, 
I think it's something that they want to eventually get to as an offensive ball club. Um, I'm not sure. You never know why people do what they do offensively, but they made a shift. They had a good drive underneath the center last time, but here they've gone in the shotgun, and they're throwing the short passes, which is essentially a, just like a run for them. So McCutcheon is left, Smiley is right, and Greer will get the ball up the middle. He is close to first down, should have enough yardage. Sometimes it's an advantage to being small. <laughs> As he just he sne just sneaking he through He just there. scooted right through there, <laughs> and had he had just a smidge more balance, he probably could have popped a long run. There's Greer, number five. Melvin Greer is a sophomore. Five foot six is what he's listed as, anyway. You know, everybody gets that media guide inch, you know. It is. And Greer's going to get the ball again. Contact made. One, two, three Blue Devils at the line of scrimmage. And anytime you're the backup running back, you go, hey, why didn't <laughs> I get the holes that the starting running back was getting earlier? Now, I, now I just saw these gaping holes on the last drive. Now it's my turn. I want those same holes. They sent him out there to be a little tenderizer, try to try to soften him up so that Covington could come back out. <laughs> they sent a five, six guy to tenderize the defense just to, just a touch for the starting running back. 10-7 is our score. The visitors from Central Connecticut State leading Georgia Southern. Travis Clark, the quarterback for the Eagles, gets the snap in the shotgun. Throws to his right, and Foster drops the ball coming across the middle. Great setup play there. Had a chance to catch the ball and run with it. I think they must have heard me. Get the ball to Get Foster. Get the ball to Foster. And you see here's just a, one of those little underneath screen when you push the defense off with the underneath receiver and bring the outside receiver underneath and false had a chance to catch it just dropped the ball and you can expect that as a quarterback going to receiver but he's been a receiver before as well so there's a lot of depth at running back for the Eagles not as much at wide receiver right now with converted quarterbacks over there and and of course uh, the loss of Teddy Kraft certainly and I don't think people understand how big a loss not only as a teammate and as a student and as, as a son to his mom and father but as a football player Teddy Kraft was an amazing amazing football player who really um, would have been just a great fit with this offensive scheme and we called his number a lot last year and of course earlier this summer he uh, he died in a motorcycle accident and it has been a been a tragic off season for this club and one of those things the loss of Irk Russell and we will have a tribute to the legendary coach at halftime. We'll also talk to the athletic director here, Sam Baker, and highlights and stats from the first half. There's going to be a lot of running in that. There's going to be a lot of running. Covington, Harrison, there's going to be a lot of running in those highlights. And certainly, you're, you're absolutely correct. There's been a, a very tough offseason for the Georgia Southern football family. Um, tonight, we, you know, with the tribute to Teddy Kraft before the game, and then all of a sudden you have to add in the Eric Russell tribute. Um, the icon of coaching for Georgia so you, not just Georgia Southern, but in the coaching. I mean, when you, when you mentioned Eric, you talk about guys like Bad Bryan, um, all the great coaches, you know, that's, that's been along the game. So certainly he'll be missing the football community. And so, and beloved all across Georgia, not for this, just for the Statesboro folks, but for his time with the University of Georgia as well. Certainly. 250 remaining in the half. Clark, play action. He is mobbed in the backfield and gets it at the feet of Covington. Well, I tell you what, now, they didn't get it, but a great setup play. Had a chance to make a, just a big play there. I, I like the call. I like the call. It was just a little screen, um, and they had a chance to make a big play. Just couldn't execute from the quarterback to the running back. Good job by the rush from the Blue Devils. They got there probably a little faster than the Eagles were ready for, and so Clark could not put the pass on target. That's why quarterback hates screens, because it gives the line. He, he knows they're he coming. Knows they're he knows coming. they're and well, I wasn't supposed to block him that long. Yeah, yeah. He gets. He knows all he's getting are lookout blocks. Hey, look out! You know that's that's all you get. There's the punt, and it hits a Blue Devil in the back. There's going to be a penalty flag though. This may be one that needs sorting out. Well, it has to be because they were blocking each other, so he wasn't actually attempting to catch the ball. So it'll be interesting to see what they sort out of this one. Now the ball is placed momentarily at the one yard line. Central Connecticut State did land on the football. It hit a Blue Devil as first contact and then of course the Eagles swarmed around it. The officials going to go ahead and compare notes on that one. <laughs> compare notes. Yes. Can I borrow your notes for a second over here? Let me compare our notes. Let's see if we get the same thing. You got, you got the back judge there standing at the football. You got the linesman standing over the flag. Here it is one more time. And we're going to see the block on the right side, just off camera, actually. A little, a little wrestling match going there on a block. 
Do you have your rule book with you? No, but I hope they do. Well, let's see. I think I saw him pull it out of his back pocket there. They're having that meeting there, sorting out like they sort out stuff, <laughs> you know. 2.37 to go in the first half of play. The visitors lead 10-7. Okay, let's see what they're sorting out. Oh, okay. One of them no-flag things again. Referee Gerald Trexler is waving it off. They sorted it out. Yes. And if you join us up, you're happy. <laughs> if you sent at the stage, you're not happy. So you're not happy because you're going to be <laughs> huddling in your own end zone. You're the ball at the one yard line. And the defense calling for a little help from the 12th man. With two minutes and 37 seconds left in the half, this is a big, big series for both sides of the ball. Central Connecticut State can essentially go in with a lead or they can essentially keep the ball to halftime up. So we'll be interested to see how they react here. I always like play action here and go for it. But now that's me sitting in the booth. Yeah, not, not standing on your goal line. That's and when the coach calls the quarterback, go, what, coach? Here we go. They only have one second on the plate. Georgia Southern wants a safety. They will not get it here. But I tell you what, he went from the one. After this play here. One more look at it. First contact is definitely in the end zone, but I'm pretty sure he does get the ball. This is another case of breaking the plane, breaking but in the reverse, plane, yeah. he gets it out. Because yeah. it looks like the tail end of the ball might be breaking the plane the other way, so. Do they get him offside? Do they get a free five here is the question. That's a heck of a catch that doesn't matter one little bit. Yeah, doesn't matter. <laughs> The officials getting together to sort it out. I'm not the, being hard on the officials. No. I think they do a great job. The beauty it. of that play is if they if they go ahead and ding the offense for that, what are they going to lose? An inch? <laughs> but if they get the defense, it's five yards going well, the other way. I think it's the defense. If you look at the point of the um, Blue Devils offensive line. Yep, right there, five yards. And that will give Central Connecticut State the space they desperately need. Desperately need it. And I think these are the penalties that drive Coach Van Gorder. He's a very good disciplinary, and he, he believes in that because he believes that you're accountable to your teammates for your action. And penalties like this, uh, he believes they're selfish penalties because you're sitting there on the ball, you got the team backed up, and you want to get a quicker start off the ball instead of just going through the normal course of a, uh, of a snap. That will create a second and five. The Blue Devils break the huddle and line up. Norris hands off to Hairston, who pushes through the left side. He gets to the 10. That'll make him just about a yard shy of the first down marker. And, and that penalty really was a big penalty because you come from being on your own inch yard, half inch yard line to getting out to the six and a half, the five and a half inch yard line, and then yes. you give up four yards on the next play, and it's a very makeable third down situation. There's a minute left in the first half. Georgia Southern down by three points and trying to stop the Blue Devils, see if they can maybe get the ball back one more time. Some other scores of note around the region in the conference. Appalachian State defeated James Madison today. It's a final 21-10. Elon dr dropping one right now, 24-3 to Towson. Furman over West Georgia, 17-7 in the third period. Coastal Carolina, next week's opponent for Georgia Southern, which you'll see here on CSS. Coastal is trailing Wofford, 17-14. They're in the second period. Charleston Southern blanking the Citadel 14 nothing in the second right now. That's a that's a big big robbery sitting right there in Charleston, and I know Charleston Southern got to be happy being a relatively new program uh, going into Citadel, well uh, into City of Charleston Southern within yep. the same within a few miles of each other. And uh, Georgia South Carolina that one started uh, not so long ago. They're still scoreless in the first quarter. This is a score that I've been watching here because. Troy and Florida State are playing, and that's that's one of those games that sounds like, you know, one of those tune-up games. At the half, it was Troy 3, Seminoles nothing, and now the Knolls actually have the 7-3 lead in the third period. They're struggling with, with, with Troy. If you play the game Monday against Miami, you'd probably be physically struggling to play anybody the following Saturday. So, but you, you they'll get it together, uh, you can imagine. And Air Force leading Tennessee 7-3 at the end of the first. Wow. Some interesting scores Very out interesting. there, folks. Very interesting. 
but back to our own interesting game and a third and one. Harrison gets the call. He's brought down in the backfield for a loss. Great defensive surge by Georgia Southern. Um, they got all excited and let the clock run a little longer than I think the coach may have, want, may have wanted it to. So uh, even when you make a big play, you have to be uh, in the mindset of where the, the game is at that point. The defense bowing up right there and say you're not getting past this line right here. Fourth down and with under a minute to go, the Blue Devils are going to have to punt it away. And so the big question becomes, can the Eagles do anything with the ball here with under a minute to go? Yeah, and what you'll see is we'll see if that pass and attack now get an opportunity to really open up with under a minute to go. You should get the ball within your, uh, within a good field position. So it'll be interesting to see and, and you know, putting the ball in foster hand here on the punt return also could be very interesting because he hadn't touched the ball, but maybe once or twice tonight at best. And so I, I think he's eager to touch the ball. I think the people are eager to see him touch the ball because it's something they've been used to seeing. Coach Van Gorder there in his debut here with Georgia Southern. The program has been here 25 years, but only a few men have had the uh, had the opportunity to be the coach. And this is a program that demands excellence. And I know that. He probably, he probably wouldn't admit it, but there had to be at least a little bit going in the pit of his stomach when he opens his career at down 10 nothing. <laughs> well, you wouldn't know because his, his expression never changes. I don't want to play poker they, with the coach. He's got a great it. poker face. They're going for it. This is, this is a wild call. Fourth and one at your own 10. They may be trying to draw yeah, him off sure they, Yep. They're just some more, uh, some more trick trickery from the uh, from the Blue Devils I trying to see if they can buy it. five yards. Yeah. I, I yeah with with under a minute you've got to get that ball away. You got to get that ball. Like you, you the thing I would be thinking is hey guys get the punt off. Let's make sure we get this punt off. Let's make sure we protect. And so with them protecting the punt that should give the punt returner if it's foster plenty of room to run the football even if you get off a good punt. Coach McInerney doesn't mind uh, trying to play a little uh, foolery out there with, uh, with the football. <laughs> Certainly does. But it hasn't worked. It has not worked thus far. So what that tells Georgia Southern is they better be careful because there's always something up their coach's sleeve over there because he tried to pull one off. Had a good scheme. Had Well, look, I don't know about you, and I'll admit it. He had me fooled. Yeah. Now, do we uh, admit it, that? It, oh, sure. Oh, it, look, it, it looked like genuine confusion out there. I, I, you know, I trust me. I know confusion when I see it. I'm good at it. <laughs> but, uh, but they, uh, they were, they were play acting on that one, and they got on the right track. And didn't allow that to put them in an awkward position. And so instead, it will be a punt from the Blue Devil end zone. Chris. Rose also doubles as a wide receiver. The senior out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. Gets the ball and the kick is away. Backing up from midfield is Foster. He takes the ball to the 45 and 40. Some room on the right to the 30 yard line. There is a flag down on the field on the far sideline. Yeah, we'll that, see what that, that is. That is big, you know. It was, when Foster caught the ball, he had at least 15 to 20 yards before the closest defender was to him. So this flag will be one of those flags that will, if it's Georgia Southern, Coach Van Gorder will be livid. 47.3 seconds on the clock. Officials conferring on what the penalty will be. Georgia Southern would start at the 20 of the Blue Devils if the play stands. Instead, there's a lot of pointing going the other direction. And when the punter points the other direction, then it's going to be against Georgia Southern. It is a hold. And that will back up the Eagles. Now, why you reckon they had to get in a huddle and wait that long to come out with that? Because clearly, if you get a flag generally, not clearly, but generally, it's a flag on the returning team. Generally, it's a flag for holding or illegal blocking. So instead of the 20, Tracy, it's, it's going to be... They're all the way back to the point of receiving the kick now. So the penalty goes from where he caught the ball. 
Typically on a return, you would think it's a spot foul. That's and the crowd doesn't like this one bit. They're still walking backwards. They're at the 35 of Georgia Southern. Oh, my. It could have been at the 20 of Central Connecticut State. That is essentially a 45-yard penalty. Well, so now what, it must have occurred before he received the ball again. No explanation to us, so we'll just move on. Judge Southern got to get themselves back in offensive rhythm and try and get some points here. Clark, the pitch up in the middle, the little shovel pass, and another flag goes down. That may be holding. There's some wrestling going on by a couple of the linemen. Nice looking play, it's that little Utah shovel pass, but to no avail, another holding. And the crowd is really enjoying the football game at the moment, yeah, aren't they? So now Jordan Southern got to make some decisions. Do they want to just run the clock out? Because now you get into a point where you're in a position, if you turn the ball over, you can really put yourself in a, an adverse situation here. It's only 34 seconds left in the first half. Georgia Southern has trailed all the way, and it is now 10-7. What a turn of events. Georgia Southern felt like they were going to get good field position. They had the ball uh, very well on the plus side of the field. For, and then they get two penalties. That's just devastating. Two penalties that together have moved them back nearly 60 yards. I can only imagine Coach Van Gogh's first halftime speech. It's, Maybe I'll sneak down there and listen to it. And now, and now they're moving up. Oh. Oh, he's got to he's got to re, he's got to change the spot from which he's marching. OK. He didn't start marking it off from the right place, so they get about five yards back out of that. Oh, my goodness. Well, I think Joyce doesn't have to be really careful here that they don't do anything to, to turn the ball over and give up points before half going out of coming out of half at 10 to 7. The way they play, they got to be. Not happy, but satisfied. Clark's got four wides and one back. He's going to give to Covington. Covington with a blocker out in front. He sheds the blocker and goes to the left. He finds the sideline at about the 40-yard line. Gain of about 15 yards. Good play call in there. Very, very safe play. Um, normally what you get when you get a, a long down situation, back in your own end with time running out, you generally get a draw or a screen. Do they have enough room yet to try and pitch one downfield? There's another look at Covington. Well, I, I think the thing that would concern me is that the Devils still have a, the Blue Devils still have a timeout. If they didn't have a timeout, I think you could do that. But with a timeout, it's too much you can do. There's another quick handoff to Covington, who cuts left after his initial move to the right and still bulls his way forward and finds the 50. The crowd loving the effort. Covington giving it everything he's got today. See, now I wouldn't be afraid of trying something a little further downfield. Got 13 seconds left. Um, it's great calling the game in the booth. You know, <laughs> I can tell you what to do. Run this play. Don't run that play. No, this is what I would do. Coach, why did you do that? Clark, with the clock running, is going to spike the football to stop time. 10.3 left in the half. You know, these situations you practice on, you practice on, and then here we are in a live game situation, not a count. So um, you can clearly see that they practice the two-minute drill, and they're running the very smooth two-minute drill. So I, th I think you're encouraged by that. It, you know, you don't win any brownie points for, you know, running a smooth operation. But when you get a new coaching staff, you get a new system in place, you can see that they, the kids are very well prepared. It's just that they're not executing very well. Foster, McCutcheon. Greer and Andrews are all wide. Covington back there with Clark. Clark steps back. He's looking down. Up the middle and nearly intercepted as he overthrows McCutcheon. Great job of protecting the quarterback then by the offensive line. Uh, I think they only rushed three players then, so that would give you a lot of people in the back end. Safety Michael Bailey, number seven, got his hands on that one. And so now with five seconds to go, Blue Devils go to ultimate prevent as they scatter players all over the field, knowing this one's going down. Trips right for the Eagles. Rush pressuring Clark out of the pocket. He's going great guns for the end zone. He's got a man. He's got a touchdown. Wow, what a Smiley. great arm. What a great arm. Darius Smiley. And the crowd goes crazy. The players go crazy. There is no time on the clock. And Travis Clark 
may be cementing a legend here. <laughs> They'll forget everything that happened. <laughs> everything that happened. What a great half of football, they'll say. I, I think what you, what you did see during that whole series, what you saw, a very calm group. You saw a well-executed play here. Um, these are plays that you know they practice. You saw the arm strength of, of Clark and just a bad defensive, bad defensive secondary play from the Blue Devils. The Hail Mary converts for the home team, and they're going to go into halftime on a high. The kick is a squibber and no good. No good. 13-10. They had trouble with the snap, and so the lead flag will down. be a field goal. There is a flag. Let's see if they get another shot at it. 13-10 is our score at the moment. It is an offsides call, and they will get another chance to tack on a point. If you're Coach McInerney, you've got to be just very dis disappointed as our stats come back up here. <laughs> we can at least tell you what the stats are now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So you've got to be just very disappointed in the back end play here. You've done a great job as the offside call goes against the Blue Devils. You've got to be just disappointed in and how your secondary approached that play there. Um, instead of knocking the ball down, they went for the interception. And, you know, then you have an offsides here. And this is a big play because now you're down, you, you got to score. Uh, you, a field goal don't tie the, doesn't tie it up. So I think there's some things happening that he'll have to address. Oh, missed it again. Foster holding, Dudley kicking, and there was nothing wrong with that except <laughs> He just flat missed. Yeah, just killed my whole theory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just went through the whole explanation mark. And so, but what a what a half of football. We'll go to halftime. The score is 13-10, favoring the Georgia Southern Eagles. It's been a wild ride already. Stick around for the second half. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. <laughs> You know, uh, a lesser group of people might have been satisfied to have done it once. And now we have an opportunity to, to at least play one more time, and that's all we want anyway. We did it the old-fashioned way. We earned it. And that makes me real proud. Unless we play well next week, there ain't no next week. We were just going along playing one game at a time playing one more time and all of a sudden you know we were national champions
The score at halftime, 13-10. Georgia Southern out in front thanks to a Hail Mary as time ran out in the first half. Hello again, I'm Mark Bryant. Joining me here in the booth, Athletic Director at Georgia Southern University, Sam Baker. Hello, Sam. How are you doing? Glad to be here tonight. I'm glad, I'm glad to have you up here. Now, let, let's, let's start out with, with the sad news, of course. Can you tell me what the last couple of days have been like for the Georgia Southern family? Well, when we got news yesterday morning that Coach Russell had passed away, it was uh, it just numbing, and it's going to be numbing for quite a while. I mean, he was just such a great person, great coach, and and uh, his legacy will live on as long as there's football at Georgia Southern. I mean, when you think of a, a man who, who took over a program that had nothing, didn't even have a helmet for the, uh, for the press conference, they went and bought a football to start the program. And uh, it's just a tribute to him of what all has happened here over these last 25 years. Now, we move on with a new era in Georgia Southern football. Tell me about, Tell me about the new coach, the new offense. What, what has that been like seeing the change, the transformation? Well, tonight's been the first time we've really got a yeah. chance to see it under pressure. And uh, they've struggled at times tonight. I think uh, Travis has made some uh, poor throws. But as you said, uh, he can make them forget them in a hurry with that uh, touchdown. You know, uh, as Coach Russell always said, uh, as long as you're close at halftime, uh, second half belongs to the Eagles. Uh, we just got to come out and play good football, and I think they will. But it's been a it's been a long process to change from a triple option to a multiple type of offense. Uh, has been uh, it's been a, a work in progress, and I think we will get better each week as we get more time playing against other competition. But uh, Brian Van Gorder and his staff have worked hard. Brian is a hard-working individual and has a, a vision for continuing the tradition of Georgia Southern winning national championships. And uh, part of the tradition also is, is nice facilities. Paulson Stadium, of course, a great place to play football, but uh, there have been some upgrades. Well, they, we're very fortunate that Gene Bishop from uh, Dawsonville was willing to donate uh, the funds for us to build a new 13,600 square field house. Uh, it's just a beautiful facility. It upgrades our locker rooms and our uh, uh, pre-game social uh, area just tremendously. We're very uh, proud that Gene was willing to uh, donate the money. He also is going to, uh, also the alumni house here on campus is going to be named in honor of uh, Gene. So he's an individual that's been very giving. Uh, his children went to school here and he has a great connection to the university. Okay, last thing before we have to go, tell me about the relationship between Georgia Southern and Statesboro. Oh, it's a great relationship. Uh, this Tuesday we will do Day for Southern uh, and where the community donates over a million dollars to the university. It's a, it, this is a great community, very supportive as uh, witnessed by the crowd we have here tonight. Uh, this whole region, when you go and talk to people uh, all over like to a Rotary or Kiwanis Club, there isn't anyone in the room that hasn't been touched by uh, Georgia Southern in some way. Of, Either they went to school or their mother or father or their children or neighbor. Georgia Southern has had a great impact. It's an outstanding university, and we're very proud to, uh, to be representing it as our athletic program. Sam, thank you so much for taking your time to, to visit with us here at halftime. And your, your team's up front, so you can well, <laughs> hopefully you can relax a little. I feel better right now, but we got a long <laughs> way to go. Thank you so much. All right, you're looking at the band entertaining the fans there on the field, and the home crowd at least getting a sigh of relief. They have a 13-10 lead, but another half to play. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Thirteen ten is our halftime score. Georgia Southern leading the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils, and they are leading because of this. Let's have a look at the play that made the difference in the first half. Travis Clark oh, the trying Eagles. to make them forget. <laughs> Right here, trying to make him forget a fumble and an interception. Finds Darius Smiley. And that's, here's, here it is from another angle. What a great throw, though. I mean, he put it in the back of the end zone, exactly where you would want that play. And you can tell that that play's been practiced, or those type of plays has been practiced, as we were speaking as it was coming down, how they was managing the last two minutes. Now you look at the rushing yards, a little misleading because a sack takes some off of Georgia Southern because Chris Covington actually has 137 by himself. Correct. Uh, they take Travis Clark's uh, sack back off and they have 128. 
92 yards rushing for Central Connecticut State, and you see that when it compares to the passing yards. Clearly, both teams they can run first. Yeah, today. And, and 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 the Blue Devils been playing on a short field as well, and that's why you see the the 92 yards that could potentially have been more had they been playing on a longer field. The two turnovers, which we which appeared to be costly early, but the Eagles have managed to overcome that. And then look at this stat. I'm, I'm amazed by this. Third down conversions for Central Connecticut State. Nothing. Zero for five. Not that Georgia Southern's been good at it. They're two for six, but hadn't been much better. If, if someone can start making third downs in the first downs, they might be able to make a difference yeah, and, in this game. And certainly, and I think the one thing that you get out of this is that uh, Georgia Southern didn't lose their composure. You can see that they are well coached, and you can see that they have a game plan. And so with that, we're getting ready for the third quarter of play. Georgia Southern leading 13 to 10. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Southern 13, Central Connecticut State 10. Eagles leading the Blue Devils, as we said before the break, thanks to one big play that made all the difference as time expired in the first half. A 51 yard pass from Clark to Smiley. Smiley's only catch of the half made it count. One catch, 51 yards, one touchdown. Yeah, he certainly did. If I'm Georgia Southern, I got a couple concerns. My kicking game, I'm really concerned with getting points out of the field goals and, and PATs. Hadn't been very smooth in that department. And then, second, we're not getting the ball. We only have one. <laughs> we again. There I go. <laughs> Georgia Southern only has one playmaker uh, on offense, and that's been Covington. And then if I'm the Blue Devils, I have a couple concerns. I've had great field position, hadn't been able to translate that into points. And then my defense has seemed to be getting tired or just mentally has some mental bust. And anytime your defense has mental, you can take physical bust, but when you have mental bust, that can tend to cost you ball games. Covington, as you mentioned, uh, the load carrier for the Eagles, 20 carries, 137 yards. He's averaging 6.8 yards a carry. That's a good that'll, average. That'll get it done. That'll get it done. Yeah, you, if you average 6.8 yards a carry and you're able to do that consistently, you you will you will never lose the ball. You're gonna you, you will get a first down every second play, and you're as long as they don't get the third down, we okay yeah. because nobody's really doing nope. anything on third down. Third down's flat lousy today. The two teams combined are two of 11 in that category. I think as we get ready to kick it off, Mark, I think one of the biggest things is you find out what type of ball club you have and what kind of coaching staff you have by what you do after halftime. And we are ready to begin the second half of play. Dudley's kickoff. Hairston waiting, and it will be Justice Hairston. He is out past the 15 and swarmed by the Eagles. They are excited. They are ready for the second half. Number 26, Marquise Maynard, was in on the tackle. And your kickoff team, if you're kicking the ball off, it generally gives you an indication of the coaches pretty, chewed you out pretty good at halftime. If you come down, you enter the ball game very excited about making plays and keeping them inside the 20. Here comes the Blue Devils offense. They have had chances. They have had plenty. They scored the first 10 points of this game. They are now trailing 13-10. Aubrey Norris, number 10 in the white shirt of the Blue Devils, steps up. The first play is a handoff and not much doing as the Eagles are all over it on the left side of their defense. Running the football, I think play action is going to happen. They're going to get back to their play action game. Uh, play calling is going to be critical for both sides of the ball because you've seen certain areas, certain things they've done work, the play action, short passes, getting the ball, getting the linebackers to step up, throwing it behind them. But just flat out running the ball over the defense has not been very successful for the Blue Devils. Number 91 there, Sherrod Taylor in on that tackle, and he is one of the leaders of the defense. Rico Zachary coming up from safety to help on that tackle as well. Norris rolling left, throwing left to Freeman. Who lets it go off his hands. But the play calling was excellent. Had a chance to execute, had leverage on the defense, exactly what I was talking about. Had the leverage. The play action, when you, when you establish the run, you really can basically do what you want in the passing game. He just didn't execute uh, on the catching of the ball. There is JoJo Freeman, number five for Central Connecticut State. They're out of the Northeast Conference. They have won that conference the last two years. 
they like the like Georgia Southern they have a new coach as well this year first year for Jeff McInerney he won his first game last week against Marist he's looking to go 2 and 0 Norris rolling right will keep he is going to get his first down or get knocked out right at the marker at the 28 yard line the ability of Norris to move out of the pocket has been key and Georgia Southern has not done a very good job of containing the quarterback Terry on Benefield in on the tackle. Here comes Norris. When you have a mobile quarterback, it's it, it's just vital that the defensive end keep contained. And they are going to mark him. Just nope. They're going to measure. You had one. You had one side look like they were about to give him the first down. The other side was moving it to third down. No, the referee says send those chains back. Well, maybe we need to huddle up. You know, officials can have huddles too, just like the offense and defense. It's called an official huddle. Yeah, so the referee just went ahead and waved the chain gang flat off the field. And then the said, head you guys off the field. You guys go. It's a first down. I have spoken. Let's move along. First and ten from the 28. Now let's see if they continue to trend and play action on a running down. This time it will go right to Hairston. Hairston stiff arms the first man and binds his way to the outside and still going. Knocked out of bounds just shy of midfield. A good run put together by Justice Hairston. He has the speed to get outside. He has the durability to run inside and thus makes him the complete back. One more time. First contact doesn't get him down. He tries to, uh, the, you know, the sidelines, the extra tackler there. Good job by the Eagles, including Dwayne Grace, to, to kind of force him further and further left. I think Joy Southern really not happy with their defense, letting them out of the hole there. Had the ball back on the, uh, the minor side of the field and now allowing them to drive it up the field. Harrison at 53 yards at the break. This time they're going to give Harrison a break. Get that ball to Harge, and Harge gets pounded up in the middle. And, and this is what I'd like to see Joy Southern do a little more. Once the back has a big run, give him a quick breather. Bring in your backup. Your backup's got to be uh, good enough to come in and give you a breather. Second and eight. Like what the Blue Devils are doing. They're controlling the line of scrimmage once again. And I think they've been the most successful when they move Harrison out of the pocket. That's when they've been most successful. This time Norris will roll to Wide his right. Open. He's looking downfield. He's got a man. 2015-10, and it looks like it should be a touchdown. It is for number 14, Jermaine Roberts. Oh, he was waiting for the ball, Wait waving for, the ball. for it. They moved the pocket, and every time they moved the pocket, they've been able to get outside contained, and then he's at a clear vision downfield. Oh, my. What a great answer for Central Connecticut State to the touchdown immediately before half by Georgia Southern. Great answer, and I think that's good coaching. I mean, you can see the play action here. You see he got plenty of protect. Looked like it was a busted coverage. Uh, it looked like a busted coverage. Uh, he thought he, the number two. Brandon Jackson. Brandon Jackson trying thought he had help over the top, and clearly there was no help over the top. Kick is up. That extra point is good, and folks, Think about it for a second. It makes it a four-point game. Four point Should game. be a, a three-point three point game. Ball. It certainly does, and I know that was one of the concerns with the coach in the kicking game. 17-13, Blue Devils on out in front. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Central Connecticut State, 17. Georgia Southern, 13. That's where we are with 12:47 remaining in the third quarter, and a uh, bit of a shootout now. Yeah, Bit of a shootout. I, I don't think we can uh, um, go past the fact that the defense really missed more. I think they, he, they missed more. I mean, he just, as they kicked the ball off, he's just a leader and he made football plays. Foster gets the ball off his shoelaces at the goal line. He's going to get pinned. No, nope, gets away at the 15, out past the 20. We'll, we'll be see if um, they share our same sentiments of getting Foster the ball. Foster hadn't touched the ball, but only in the kicking game, and I think he can get more space if he's getting the ball within the field as you see him one replay of the touchdown. One more time, there's the Blue Devils, and again, it, it's it's amazing because there you have Jermaine Roberts. He's waiting for, but he's actually stopped. Stop waiting he for the ball. He has stopped because he, if he hit in stride, it would have been even easier. But. That's why I believe it was a blown coverage. Looked like he was expecting help over the top in the cover two scheme. Travis Clark, does he have an answer? He's going to go with Covington. That's worked so far. Covington, great change of direction. He's still going. They're probably going to bring this one back, though. A flag flies in the in the backfield. 
It's amazing because the flag was thrown and he was well beyond that point of contact where the official would have, we're assuming that he's calling holding, but it's in that area, general area where holding is called. So Covington continues to be the, the lone star on offense here. Plus the offensive line has done a very good job as well. It is a hold on the offense and that will wipe out a 13 yard gain by Covington and will instead send him going the other way. But this is what happens in first ball games, as you see the replay. We're we'll going to look for number 62, and that's a tackle, ladies and gentlemen. That would be a tackle <laughs> at the point of a con at the point of the ball carrier. So the Russ got it right. Russell Orr, six foot four, junior, 272 pounder, and he dropped all 272 <laughs> on the man he was. He started blocking and ended tackling. What you're getting from Georgia Southern first game mistakes is those are the type of mistakes that you get in a first game and where you get the holdings because you had you hadn't had the emotions of playing in the game with the crowd here and you just hadn't played at the speed of an opponent coming at you whereas you've been playing against your own teammates. So instead of first and 10 a lot further down the field it is first and 20 at their own 13. Travis Clark the transfer from Southern Miss is the quarterback calling the signals. He has his backs in an eye. Defense showing blitz. They're coming in pass deflected at the line. That appeared to be number 91, Terry Dunn, with the uh, well-timed leap. Well, the rule of thumb, you can't get to the quarterback, obstruct the pass. Jump, jump, jump up. Jump up. And... Trying to block a passing lane. It's the left side of the defense, and there he is. Big 91 getting up there, and all Clark can do is watch that ball fall back down. 11.53 to go in the third. The Blue Devils with the lead and Covington with the ball. Open room on the left. Out past the 25, close to the 30. They're going to mark him at the 28. What you like, what I like about Covington is that when he picked his spot, he goes. And I think that's the sign of a good running back that has the ability to be, become a, a really good running back. And I think um, him showing that he can carry the load, um, like I said, I, I would continue to like to see them do a little more substituting just simply from the fact that as he, you see him burst the speed here, got great speed to the outside, and he made up his mind where he was going. But now you got to believe that he's a little win, and it's a big down, third down here. And they're just lucky they get it to be third and five after all that. Pass to McCutcheon, and he gets it on the run. No. Drop. Hit him right, right on the numbers. Look like as yeah. he, as well, McCutcheon had to kind of lean into it, but he great pass. You can see the offense really, they, they, they have the ability to, you know, to get into a rhythm. But I still think that they just trying to find the identity. You know, you really don't see them with an identity. Where it's a great call, uh, just not great execution. So that's going to force a punt for the Eagles. Not something the Statesboro crowd is all that used to, what they're seeing here today. It's a bit of a struggle for the home club. Punt is away. Harrison is back waiting for it, gets it at his own 20. Man on him right away and still hand fighting with number 23, Ronnie Wiggins. And Wiggins wins the battle as Harrison loses his balance. And Harrison, it's very difficult for one man to bring Harrison down. He's gotten out of that one. Uh, as you can see, where he's just stiff on and just power through it. Tune in every Saturday for a full day of live college football on CSS. Live coverage starts at noon. Visit css-sports.com for complete live game coverage. 17-13 is our score. The Blue Devils with the lead and the ball here in the third quarter of play. Clock running at 10.50 to go in the period. Three backs Big for the Blue Devils. Series. Big defensive series for Georgia Southern defense here. And Norris will keep as he goes right up the gut past the 30 for a first down. A little option back at Georgia Southern. Yeah, he gives a little pitch look, but didn't look like he really considered it all that seriously he to didn't me. Considered it all. A little speed option with the block and fullback lead. Now we get back to option football, I can really dissect there, that. Yeah. But I'm having to go back to my Canadian football. Back to, back to your world and yeah, options. You back, can see here it is right one more there, time. Started up field. Great decision with the quarterback and the option is basically about quarterback and making good decision. And for the defense, it's about assignments. You've got to stay on your guy. It certainly You is. can't be fooled by misdirection because that's what it's all about on, uh, for the offense. Again, with the three backs. This time it's straight to Harrison, who's brought straight down. The defensive line did a good job of playing on the other side of the ball. 
as they untangle so we can get a number on who Sherrod made the Taylor was involved and uh, Harlan Bauer was involved and the defensive line. Yeah, some other guys jumping in. But I think I think it was Sherrod Ta uh, Sherrod uh, Taylor and uh, and Harlan Bauer were the first two and then the others just decided to join in for some yeah, fun there. Playing in the trenches is no fun. You know, those guys there, they are the workhorse. They really are the dictator of how the game goes. If you win in that battle, a lot of scrimmage, it make covering easier, make everything easier. Second and ten. With no gain on the last play. Play action and now rolling left, and he's got nothing but green space in front of him. Norris will get another first down right at the sticks. Jordan Southern has consistently lost contain on the quarterback and has caused a lot of problems. And, and it's really given the Blue Devils a lot of confidence coming out of halftime. And we talked about halftime adjustments. The Blue Devils seem to have done a better job thus far than the Georgia Southern staff. Now, last week, well, here, one more look at Norris here. And he, he wants to throw, but, you know, there's, there's green grass out in front of him, green so he grass. goes ahead and grabs it. And once you break contain, then you got the choice. It, it, the, the decision becomes a lot easier to make because there's no one in front of you. Now, last week, Norris had only four carries for 25 yards. They really spread the ball around a, a good bit uh, as they got uh, 335 yards of offense did Central Connecticut State, and 288 of it was on the ground. Harge had 76, Harrison had 72, Freeman had 57. Norris at 25. I mean, they're really spreading the ball around. Well, today Norris is certainly showing he can, you know, he, he can he's not low. he's yeah, not he just 25 carry. yards. That's he can true. do he can carry. I think the difference in the ball game is the Blue Devils defense has created mistakes by Georgia Southern offense, but Georgia Southern defense really hadn't created any turnovers or any big play to change the course of the game yet. A few good stops, but they're not they're not penetrating. They're not getting back there. They're not blowing up the play. Norris keeps it himself. Nice duck and, and dive there. Just Georgia Southern def defense inability to stop the ball carrier at the point of attack. When they first touch him, they hadn't been able to bring him down. There's always been a forward lean. Uh, he's finished. Good defense don't allow the running the ball carrier to finish forward. You know, you know what else? The, the other thing they're doing is they're they're taking time. Taking I mean, they're, time, they're, yeah. they're, they're, the Blue Devils are using the clock. They're using a lot of the play clock. They're watching the clock roll down here in the game, running the ball. And there's Coach Van Gorder. He's helpless to stop the clock as it goes. We're only in the third period now, but the Blue Devils with the lead and the ball and the rolling clock, everything going their way at the moment. They've dominated the third quarter with ease. Norris to Harge. This time there is contact in the backfield. It will be back to a no-gain situation. And, and, that, and that's essentially what we were talking about just before the play ran. When you, the first point of contact, the ball carrier went backwards. And that was one of the few times that Joyce Southern had been able to do that, as you see when the ball carrier has always been moving forward. Let's watch the group here. And first in and grabbing onto good old is Terrion Benefield. He's said, you can't go anywhere without your legs. Can't go anywhere I'm gonna, without your legs. I'm going to hold on. tackling high, and this ball carrier has been constantly moving forward. So this is a big down for Joyce Southern. Let's see if they've done what they, the, the Blue Devils have consistently broken contain on this down here. Third and four. Norris, the pitch to Hairston. Trying to get forward. He will be dropped short. The defense rises up. Now, the defense hadn't made a no turnover situation, but they've done a solid job in stopping some third down stops. They've given up a couple drives. They gave, they gave up the one right there. You see, they just were in. They, we had more people than they had out there. there. Well, there's five blue shirts five waiting, blue waiting shirt. to You tackle them. No, you tackle them. Just stop him from getting Somebody, the first yeah. And then good teamwork there. They're going to send uh, Raja Andrews back uh, by himself this time instead of Foster to try and return this punt. Fourth and four. And the kick is up and away. Andrews rolling to his right will let it go. Tricky bounce, and it looks like they're going to pin the Eagles back at their own six. And with that, with 7.04 remaining in the third period and the Blue Devils leading 17-13, you're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. First and 10 at their own six. Not exactly a rosy scenario. They're going to have to go 94 yards. They'll start by trying to get some for Covington, but he is bowled right down. And Mark, let's make a point here. Some of the fans may have been concerned about Andrews letting the ball go there, but the rule of thumb, if you're on the 10, don't back up. And so he didn't back up. He made the right decision. It just took a good bounce for the Blue Devils. So, you know, sometimes fans go, why didn't he catch that? Well, I think he did what football 
people tell him to do. Don't back up inside the 10. More things can go wrong if he tries to catch it than if he doesn't in that situation. Certainly. All right, Clark in the shotgun on the second and 10, immediately throwing to his left. And he finds Andrews out there. Andrews still fighting for more yardage, but he stepped on the sideline. See, you'd like to see that be. Now, Andrews is great. He's going to be a, you know, a fabulous player. But I, I think, for me, I'd like to see that to be Foster. You know, I, I just believe that Foster, and I, I don't want to beat the point because certainly the coaches have watched him all week, and they know what they want to do. But I know I've seen Foster enough to know that, I, you know, he should be touching the ball uh, somehow on this offense. Clark again in the shotgun. He's got one back, two wide left. Now sends Andrews in motion going right. Clark sees an opening up in the middle and takes it himself. He's going to get a first down. Now, now Clark's into the ball game now. Now he, under, from that play there, it tells me he's in the ball game. He understood how important that first down was for his offensive unit coming out of the halftime, hadn't gotten the first down, been sitting on the sideline a while. That was a very critical first down. He took what the defense gave him and didn't force something unnecessary. Certainly. And, and then let's see how he progressed from that point on because I thought that was a big decision there. Clark with his first and ten. We'll put the ball in the gut of Covington, and he's got a room still running to midfield. It, it's that, a, he's a force. He is a force, and it's amazing what a first down will do for an offensive unit because when you don't get first downs, you start doubting your ability, your confidence goes down. But as soon as you get first down, it just seems to pick the level of confidence up for everybody. You can't say enough about Chris Covington today. And regardless of how this game turns out, whether they wind up on top or not, he is definitely the hero of the day for Georgia Southern. He's going to get into Adrian Peterson type numbers if he's oh, not careful. Oh, oh, oh. Now, you, I, now just, I said. That's a Ad, big name. I said Adrian <laughs> Peterson type numbers now. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if we get there. You're watching CSS 1713 Blue Devils. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 17-13, Blue Devils in front. McCutcheon gets the ball and scoops inside the 45 to about the 42-yard line. Back to the point where Clark ran for the first time. It just seemed that Georgia Southern confidence has upped in Andy since that first down. And you can see, you know, very positive yards on first down. Put him in a very makeable second down situation. Right back at it. The handoff to Greer has got room in the middle. And Greer is running. The, the running styles are similar with Covington. You see, they're downhill runners. They understand that there's no hesitating in the backfield. It's get down here and find the hole and run it. Hurry up offense continues for Georgia Southern as they shuttle players in and out. The Blue Devils trying to counter by moving players in and out. They are winded. They are trying to adjust, and they're having a hard time. It's been a very controlled, as you see the the Blue Devils defensive line stopped there. It's been a very controlled no huddle, though, uh, where they're not in a rush. Um, it, it's a no huddle, but not a hurry up. Yeah. Where you hurry up, you get in play, you, you're working against the clock. But a no huddle simply means that you're formation and running guys, formations from the sideline. So Kyle Collins is wide right. Smiley, Darius Smiley, wide left. Backs in the eye. Clark will give to Greer who was going to give back to uh, Clark, I think. Did it look like he was turning, or was he just... It, it looked like either that or he was ducking from Davis, who yeah. just... <laughs> Davis lived up to his big tab this day, and he's been very dominant on defense tonight. He's done a really good job of holding point, and when they've had a big play out of the defensive line, he's been that guy. Let's see. Now it's going to be third and 14. Devon Douglas and the other off, other defensive linemen for uh, Central Connecticut State showing a thing or two on those last couple plays. Foster gets the ball, but too much traffic, and it's going to be a short gain. Well, well, you're in a third down situation. That's a it, the percentage is not with you. Uh, third and 14. I mean, it's just a tough makeup. You got the ball of Foster in that situation, but then when the defense know you're going to throw the ball, it's easier to defend the pass when you know that the offense is going to pass. You know what? I'm going to give a lot of credit to Central Connecticut State for calling a timeout and changing the, the momentum. They, 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 Georgia Southern was was going in that timeout, and everything since the timeout, they, they've just been, it's been Central Connecticut State on top of it. Yeah, you certainly, because as we punt the ball here, I, I was concerned to know why they called it, and then that's why I'm in the booth, and that's why <laughs> he, coaches 
coaching his ball. His, his guys were backpedaling, and he wanted it to stop right then and there, and it, it, it worked. It, it stopped worked. the drive. It certainly did. You, you make a great point, giving him credit. He did a great job in calling the timeout, and now George Southern goes back to defense. I, I think Coach Van Gordon may be a little concerned his defense being able to maintain uh, discipline play series after series after series. They've come up with big plays some series and they've given up long drives in other series and I think what he's looking for is some consistency in stopping them. Now, don't take anything away from the Blue Devils. They, they've done a good job on third down yes. this quarter. Yes. You know, they've managed to make some in the first half, they made no third down conversion. This half, they've made some third down conversion. And so here come the Blue Devils one more time with the ball in the lead and three minutes to go in the third. The handoff is to the left side to Freeman. There is a flag in the backfield. And Norris reaching for his knee. And that could change things dramatically. Norris is limping toward the sideline. It may be a cramp. When you grab, it looked like he may have grabbed his calf. And I didn't, you know, I didn't get a good look at it. It looked like he may have a, a cramp. Let's hope for his sake that's all that is. He is managing to hobble all the way over to the bench. And what the coach probably would want him to do is go down and give his backup quarterback time to warm up so not a quarterback get no warm-up throw and a penalty on the offense you know so the coach probably would say next time hey son go down and give my backup quarterback a chance to take a snap and you can see him taking snaps on the sideline and that quarterback will be Ryan Holmes Ryan Holmes number 11 Ryan with the uh, 11, uh, Ryan, yeah. Ryan's got some hair sticking out the back of that helmet he better be careful that, that that's a, that's a target for uh, that's a target <laughs> 248 left in the third period and a little movement there on both sides of the ball the different quarterback voices it's amazing that how it affects the offensive uh, personnel the defense was up first then the offense joined them and Let's see what our, our officials come away with That's on this one. That's an official huddle there. Yeah, there's your official yeah. huddle again, yes. Usually moves on with some nodding and pointing. There you see the defense crossing into the neutral zone, bringing the offense. Usually winds up being a call on the defense. Certainly, you're correct. You went out on a limb? <laughs> Let's see if the referees saw it that way. Now they're going to go with the tight end moving. Your, your so they first did, on the limb in uh, 06, well. and you come up short. Defense must not actually have crossed the line on that. The little, they're allowed to hop and jump and do cartwheels if they want to, but they can't cross the line. Can't so. cross the line and no contact allowed. Well, you're a backup quarterback. You come into this situation. It's an ideal play action situation, but I don't know if I would trust my backup quarterback to do it. And so second at 15 with your backs in the end zone is a little little touchy situation. Harrison is going to be hit at the five and forced back into the end zone. A little, little extra enthusiasm there. In on that one, number 46, Harlan Bauer and friends. Well, I, I, I think this is, that was, I, I thought that would have been a more critical down than this one, even though as you see the replay here, and it's just the lead ISO, uh, just the ISO there. That play was a more critical than because you got none of the yards back. And so now you're faced with third and 13. And so do you try and get the first down and give up good field position? Uh, I think you're going to see him move the pocket. So let's see if Georgia Southern defense has adjusted to the moving of the pocket and maybe give him a two-way run pass option once he breaks contain. Under two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Holmes. We'll keep it. He's in his own end zone. He better look out. He manages to run it out past the 10. You got to give George Southern defense credit, some staff, the staff some credit because they did not allow him to break contained in, which they had been doing um, the whole game with Harrison. He came, he dropped back to the end zone, looked around, saw blue shirts, and uh, and gave up on this one. You see, there he is. He's got a man in his face. And that man is was number 65, no, rather number 55, Larry Beard. Larry Beer did a great job of staying home and not allowing the quarterback to break containment. So Foster, number four, Jason Foster, many of you may remember as the quarterback of the Eagles a year ago, returning kicks, playing as wide receiver this year. He waits just on his side of midfield. It will drop 
and bounce out of bounds just short of midfield. So the Eagles will begin at the Blue Devils 48 yard line. Good field position for Georgia Southern trailing in the game 17 13 with 53 seconds remaining in the third period. That was an excellent punt by Chris Ross. Didn't give the return a chance to advance the football, kicked it away from him, even though they're in the, on their own side of the field, but it didn't allow the big play by Foster. Foster started to come out for the offensive play. Not in this formation, he comes off. Covington, the lone back behind Clark. First and 10 at the 48. Clark rolls left. He's got room, he's gonna keep it. He's got a blocker in front of him and he gets to the 40 and out of bounds at the 39. Nice blocking upfield by Hal Scarborough, the tight end who first thought he might be a receiver on the play and then turned and made his block. I think the key though was Lionel McGriff not blocking on that play. If you see the replay as he break contain, good decision by uh, Clark, but if you watch here, he didn't block right there. 16 did not block, which was a critical non-block on that play there. You can see, you see the rear of the jersey, you need, don't yeah. touch. And, and it's easy to say as number 21 is down for the Blue Devils, that would That's be. That's 31 for Ad Muhammad actually, uh, one of the, uh, standout DBs yeah, for Muhammad. Central Connecticut. Certainly can't afford to lose him being a defensive leader. They have a lot of great expectation for Hamid and look like he'll be okay. But I think a bigger question for the Blue Devils now is Harrison okay as um, they look and see if they can get him back together on the sideline. Stay tuned for Fight Sports Boxing. Visit CSS-Sports.com for upcoming shows. CSS. Okay, it's going to be a second and short. Second and short as the Eagles come up to the line. Clark looking to the sideline for the play call. He's going to have Reddick, the fullback behind him, and Covington dotting the eye there. Clark with the snap and the ball to Covington right up the middle. Met hard by number 54, Chris Stimmel. But Covington still managed to push forward after the contact. The second effort looked like it'll be first down as the official indicate. Second effort there got the first down. For and Covington's going to walk off. Let's see if 54 sticks him right there, but doesn't wrap him up. And so Covington pushes to the outside. In the end, he's brought down by DeVroy Murphy. Marquise Maynard is a new back in the backfield, so we'll see if we get some, um, if he'll get some carries. Well, unfortunately, a block that didn't, a block that was still in his way is going to drop him for a loss. And, and I, I think that's what frustrates offensive coach more than anything. The third quarter is over. 17-13, Central Connecticut State out in front as we go to break. You're watching CSS. We will begin the fourth quarter of play here at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia in an unusual situation. The home team is not leading the game as they typically do here in Statesboro. Central Connecticut State, the Blue Devils leading 17-13, but Georgia Southern with the ball. Clark throws to his left. McCutcheon tries to make a move, is brought down after a short gain near the far sideline. Well, he, at least he puts him in the manageable third down situation. Um, it'll be third and a long eight, so it'll be a manageable situation. Um, you hate to see first down go for negative yards, as you see Covington there and, and his job. He's done a great job carrying the football. You want to know how great a job he's done? I know he's, you're going to tell me. He's got, he's got only about 185 yards today. 185 yards for Covington on 24 carries. Clark set to throw, rolls left. He's got pressure in his face. Finds a man, no but day. incomplete. Anytime Joy Sutton offense has gotten off track, the Blue Devils have done an outstanding job on first down. They've even kept them for negative yards or no yards, and so it put them in what we call off schedule. Once you get off schedule, uh, it's tough on offenses. It's fourth down and about eight. They're in Central Connecticut State Territory and trailing, and for all the world right now, looking as if they're going to go for it. And, and it's a good decision because a punt, if you punt it in the end zone, you only net about 12 yards. Um, if you don't get it, you don't really give up too much good field position. It'll be 
you know, relatively good field position, but, it, you know, I don't think it will well, then he changes in mind as I talk through my yep. spiel of going for it. So um, field position battle, he's going to play the field position battle. He must have thought about it. Um, that's coaching. They're going to try and try and pin this one back. Now, if this ball goes in the end zone, you're right. There's, there's, they, they get very little out. They get of very it. little. So it's a lot on the punter here, and we'll see if um, Dan Jordan can do a good job of pinning it in the corner. If that's, we can pin them in the corner here. So on fourth and eight, with 14 minutes left in the game, Georgia Southern kicking away to the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils. What would you do here if you get to make the call? You come out the boot, I got the suit I, tie, and you go down on the sideline and the fans scream and go for it. I, I think this is, I think going for it here is, is acceptable, both for what, what you're saying in terms of the field position is not that large a difference, but also because you're down, the clock has done a lot of rolling, there's a lot of running in this game. That, that final quarter could disappear quickly. Take your chances where you've got them. And then he's playing, you know, then on the other side, field position battle, momentum could shift to the Blue Devils offense if they stop him. So I think, and the offense seemed very fragile tonight, Georgia Southern offense. Kick is away. He's trying to bounce it toward the corner. No. Winds up in the middle of the field and picked up. Looked like he was trying to angle it off his foot, but it wound up right in the middle, and Blue Devils did a good job getting getting room. Now so that, that backfired. Yeah, the net the net difference here is, as we said, very little. Very little, you know. And Georgia Southern, they've got other challenges on their schedule. They didn't expect to open with, with as difficult a fight as they're getting. Next week, they've got Coastal Carolina, which is a program that hasn't been around very long, but has great aspirations of, of doing well. They do, they do a good job over there in Conway. And then, then it's into the conference schedule. Chattanooga, Western Carolina on the road. Norris looking downfield. He's overthrowing his man by a good five yards. He was and Norris is still trying hurt. to hit Josh Every Roth. He plans, he's back on the sideline. He limped off the field then. As soon as he planned to throw the football, it seemed like he can't put any weight on his right foot. So he limped back off. And Holmes he, is right back in yeah, there. It seemed like he's, he's cramped. Once you start cramping up, it's hard to stop cramping. A lot of interesting scores in other games out there, but one of the most interesting, I think, on the page simply has to be Troy 17, Florida State 10 with seven minutes left in the game. Wow. I didn't see that one coming. I don't it's, think anybody could see that one I coming. think the folks at Dope Campbell are a little upset. I'm just guessing. Hand off to the left side. Harge fighting for tough yards. Bounces to forward progress should get him close to the 30. I, I know who's upset as well. Miami got to be upset. <laughs> so, well, Y'all throw, y'all put a game like that on us, then you come back and throw an egg like that against Troy State. Yeah, somewhere they've got a Miami guy saying, you know, you're not even going to make it a quality win for us. You're going to hurt our computer ranking. We need that for bowls, man. <laughs> Don't lose to a, you know, a, a small What's school like that. Floyd A.M. score? Oh, let me try to find that sucker. Where is that one? Miami 21-3 in the third. Big down here for Georgia Southern. Got the backup quarterback on the field for the Blue Devils, and we'll see if Georgia Southern once again can stop them defensively. Third and eight. Crowd getting loud. Whistles blowing. He may have taken too much time. Well, so one of the, the quarterback certainly is in a, a in a difficult situation. He's coming off the bench once again. The, Harrison don't want to take nothing. He's played an excellent ball game, but Harrison runs off the field instead of going down. They got the timeout, but he runs off the field instead of going down, allowing his backup to get his thoughts together. And this game is. It's a close ball game. It's a four-point ball game. And so now you've burnt two timeouts up. You have one left. And so if Georgia Southern can ever get anything going, they can put a lot of pressure yeah, on. The, the good news for the Blue Devils, you got the timeout, you don't lose the five yards. The bad news is now you only have one left for the 12-51 remaining in this game. Correct. Your lead is four. It's, it's only four points. And, and, and Ryan Holmes is, you know, we, hadn't, we don't know much about him. We haven't seen him play much. But it's even more difficult for him to try and get himself into the rhythm because he has for just a split second. The quarterback runs off the field limp and he has to run into the ball game. So I think what their coaching staff, you know, should just, just tell Harrison, go down, take a knee, 
give our offensive line a break, give our defense some more of a break because they're going to be back on the field shortly. And it will, and I think it'll be an easier yeah. transition for them. You, you see some shots of the Central Connecticut State bench. It, it doesn't usually uh, stay this hot and humid, I think, back up in the Northeast Conference very often. And they're, they're getting a blow over there because they're tired out. We'll see what happens here on a big third and eight. The crowd is as loud as they've been all night. Holmes with the ball rolling right. He's going to keep it. He's trying to find a first down. He's pushed out short. I, I thought Holmes made a great decision. Great, better defense than offense, but what a good decision by Holmes. 99, Damon Suggs, one of the guys narrowing that angle and thrusting Holmes out of bounds. Just the action. Looked like he was going to get the first down. And once again, Georgia Southern gives up the corner, which has consistently plagued them this ball game. And so on fourth and two, the Blue Devils will be forced to punt it away. Now we have nobody on the field. 12.43 left in the game. And Georgia Southern, a little confused perhaps. Good timeout, though. Don't have to panic. Good timeout. So with 17-13, our score and the visitors out in front, you're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 12.43 left in our ball game, and we are still looking for that punt from the Blue Devils, who have the lead. Kick is up and away. Foster is back looking for it. And they're going to throw a flag on the block. That was close. It was borderline, but officials staring it down. Yeah, and penalties have been the Achilles heel for Georgia Southern this evening because they've gotten these critical penalties at the point of attack on several occasions. I was watching the official to see if he, which way he was going to call it because they were close to being almost sideways on yeah. that. Is he front? Is he back? Yeah. I think the crowd was watching too because they saw as soon as that flag left, there was a groan. They knew what it was. Twelve and a half minutes. Georgia Southern has had a had a few glimpses of brilliance today, but separated by long stretches of struggle and yeah. Yeah, difficulty. More struggles than success, and I think that and I'm, you know, the first game, you, you're going to get this kind of play, and I think you can see the difference in the two ball club. You can see that uh, Central Connecticut State has played a game. I think they've, they've been a little more polished. They, they, they've been, they have not been penalized as much, and they're playing a little more crisper, a little more, they seem to be a step ahead of Georgia Southern at this point. And not, people not used to hearing that yeah, yeah. somebody's a step ahead it's of different. Georgia Southern at this point, especially if it's not a conference foe. But give um, Central Connecticut State a lot of credit. They've done a good job. They've come in here. They've kept their composure. And they've played a good, solid football game and see if they can hang on. Well, for the first time in school history, or at least the first time since the first year, they're trying to run a new offense. Certainly. And 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 uh, so it's not just a matter of picking up where you left off. They're yeah. they're starting fresh. Yeah. And then they got a you know when you add transfer in, you get a new quarterback in. Um, you can expect some of these mistakes from your offensive unit. Defense has played okay. I think they're going to have to continue to raise their level if they're going to compete for a conference championship. But they played a solid enough ball game to help Joy Seven win. Travis Clark on second and seven. We'll give the ball to Covington. He has been the horse today, and he's got a first down here. He's still churning. Gets it beyond the 30 and forced out of bounds at the 32. And he's been the difference in the ball game thus far for Georgia Southern offense. He's been the, the that's my concern about Georgia Southern offense. As you see, uh, you will see a replay here of Covington carrying the football. And the Blue Devils have somebody down. Look like we got another cramp what? on the field. Blue Devils are cramping up on every play at this yeah. stage of the game. There's Covington. It, it's really a counter play. It looks, you know, it looks like a, a, a lead, but it's a counter play where he starts out one way and comes back uh, another. So, but I think what Georgia Southern has to do is find another playmaker. You cannot play the game with just one playmaker on the field the entire night. They certainly have plenty of talented guys out there, but again, like you say, it's been Covington all day long. Yeah, you need something, you look to Covington. Yeah, and I, and I think a lot of pressure is on Travis Clark. He's coming into a program, six national championship by four different quarterbacks, and so he's in a position where there's a lot of scrutiny on the quarterback position, and certainly people expect the quarterback play to be at a premium, but I think you just got to give him time. A lot of lineup shuffling right before the snap there. Five seconds left on the play clock and some trickery here as they do a reverse to Jason Foster, who's cornered in the backfield. 
manages to get positive yardage, but only a short gain after all that. But it's a positive gain. I think Georgia Southern has been better on offense when they've gotten positive yards on first down. And that was all Jason Foster. And that's why I'm a believer, as you see Jason Foster here on the, in the round, you can see he's nothing there. And then there's nothing there. And he gets upfield and he gets three and a half, four yards. And so you can see Foster's ability to be a playmaker for this ball club. Well, give all the credit in the world there to the Blue Devils for staying home. The ball starts moving right. Fumble. Fumble. Clark, did he lose the ball? I think Lost he did. The ball. the ball belongs to the Blue Devils. You, you're correct. They did stay home, and they did an even better job there of coming up with a mistake once again by the uh, Joy Southern offense. Clark, not the first time he's had that problem tonight. He fumbled on the first drive and threw an interception on the second drive and appeared to settle down after that. Did not have those problems since then. But now that we're in the fourth quarter, you cannot have those cannot, problems. Not when you're down and, well, first of all, if you turn the ball over, you, the chance of you getting beat just increased twofold. So we'll see if Georgia Southern defense can come out and make a stop or if the Blue Devils offense can make a run with their backup quarterback in. That's a that's a 3-0 difference in turnovers. Blue Devils have not coughed it up. They've got a new quarterback in, though, Holmes, who's put in this position. That's a run play all the way. He'll get a few on it and then get slammed out of bounds by the tag team of number 10, Dwayne Grace, and number 35, Brandon Eccles. Well, if you're, if you're the Blue Devils coaching staff here, three points put you in a, at least a time situation here. And so you got your backup quarterback in. You don't want him to lose the ball game for you. And you don't want him want to put him in that position. As you see a junior union in New Jersey, Ryan Holmes, big kid, got good, good wheels. And so it's his time now. 10 minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the game. This is a handoff to Hairston who forces his way inside the 20. Like a bullet, they just yes, shot him for. Great call. Inside trap, real quick hit and play. Um, Georgia Southern can only imagine that they're going to run the football here. And so to get hit with a quick trap, look, like they're going to have to measure for a first down or not. Look like it's, I'm going out on a limb. I think it's a first down. Third down, I went out on a limb and he didn't even measure. <laughs> he put me on the spot there. I went out on a limb and he didn't even give me a measurement. No. And he started to clock. Yeah, it's no more than a hand span <laughs> short on that one. So it's third and a little bit. And I'm surprised and to see the them shotgun. in the gun. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Holmes waiting on the snap. Are they trying to get him to jump? Now he calls for it. Right to Hairston. He's got room inside the 20, 15, 10, down to the eight. He's had him stop, and Harrison was a better player than the defense. And the official got ran over there as well. Yeah, he's he's we have a we have an official definitely shaken up on the play. But Harrison, he he's yeah, they didn't even make solid contact yeah. on him at all, actually. I thought someone had a good look at him yeah. maybe at the line, but they did not. Well, we had a chance there. Rico Zachary had a chance to to make a play there and he wasn't able to come up with it. Now at this point it's it's our uh, it's our umpire who's down and that's Chris Christmas, who is who's not getting a gift today. He got knocked down. You couldn't resist that one. I'm, I'm okay. sorry, okay. but uh, but he's getting. He's, at least he's got a smile about it. He yeah. knows. He's, he's like, like, are they, he probably looks around. He's like, are they got me on camera? They're not got me on camera. Got me on camera. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me and you nowadays if we were out there. We'd be on a knee going, hey, where's the sub at? Okay, get right. some. Oh, he's, oh, that doesn't look too that good. Does not look good. Oh, and he looked like he's really shaking. Walking up. really gingerly. Yeah, he gets, let's gets give up. him a hand. Let's hope he's all right. And I think people forget how dangerous it is to be a, a, a referee out there because you have a lot of bodies moving in and out, and you have to really be on your P's and Umpire's got to move Umpire's a lot, too. Gotta he's got to move a lot. You know, he's, he's, he's shaking up pretty good. He's gonna have to go, they're going to have to go to the backup guy. Well, there you go. That's the stat we referred to just a minute ago. Kind of says it all, doesn't it? Yeah, turnovers, you turn the ball over, you get beat. And Joy Southern, you know, they're still in the ball game here if their defense can come up with a hole. And, you know, I just think that Central Connecticut State is not going to put Ryan Holmes in a position to lose this ball game for him. So you'll see a lot of running and some real safe play calling. 
and to see if they can't get it in the end zone with that. A steady dose of Hairston has been enough so far. Let's see if they go with that again. And uh, you can see him working he's the clock. Working, all yeah, he's milking it down under five seconds. He what? will keep it, running up a hole in the middle inside the five to the two. You know, you can only imagine if you join Southern defense, you can only imagine it's only going to be runs, safe runs, quarterback sweep, right there, draw as Rico Zachary get up slow. Um, they sent they sent Hairston a little roll block there. He tries to take out uh, Terry on Benefield. Good job still going forward after still the going contact forward after the contact and that's been the difference in the ball game. Central Connecticut State offensive guys have continued to go forward whether it was Harrison um, whoever was running Jojo Freeman all their backs have continued to go forward. How painful is a touchdown here if you're Georgia Southern. It will be Harrison met in the backfield and drop excellent defensive play and boy did they need that from Brandon, number 98 Brandon, Daniel. Brandon, Daniel. Brandon Daniel. Oh wow. You know, Joyce. He's a transfer from the University of Florida. Wasn't getting any playing time at all there. He's, his home is Pompano Beach in South Florida. And uh, boy, he came up with one of the plays of the game right there. Certainly was. And then his third down. What a big down this is for Georgia, Georgia Southern. The defense understands that they want help from the fans. Central Connecticut State know they're in a great position here. If they can just get the first down, they have themselves up. Put himself in a pretty good position. I look for him to in the eye. He's running out of time. He's one second on the play clock. Holmes still has it. He's got a man in the back of the end zone. Too high. Looking for Freeman. But still a very safe call. Had the guy open. He didn't make it, but he didn't make the mistake of turning it over. And so they're still in good, good position to put three more points up there, which would give them a seven point lead with half of the final period left. So it's a somewhat of a win for Georgia Southern defense and if Central Connecticut State get this field goal it's a somewhat of a win for them so one more time you're going to see what what Holmes sees he's got his man back there just puts too much on it the, the, the thought there in, in part I'm sure is I got to loft this so that no one else can get it but yeah. my guy but he put too much under too it. much on it and it's a backup quarterback mindset look I don't want to lose it the team has played so hard I don't want to lose this ball game the Central Connecticut State coaches look like they were desperately calling for Locked. timeout. It's blocked. The holder. Oh, my. The oh holder my. was the last one on the field. The coaches were screaming for a timeout, I think. Looked like they were screaming for a timeout, and it's just a got a guy. We have someone down. Look like it's number 55. If I'm Larry, it's Larry Beard is still yeah. down for the Eagles. A block that sends the crowd to their feet, screaming. It is still a four-point game. Central Connecticut State in front. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Connecticut State, and the score is still that number because of this right here. The kick is low and right into the line and blocked. And the Eagles hold off the Blue Devils one more time. Get the ball down for 7.37 remaining in the game. Travis Clark, the quarterback for the Eagles. And mem remember the new rule, the clock starts as before, you know, normally it starts after possession changes. Clark, the ball knocked down by number 44, Ernie Graywax. The defensive end from New Canaan, Connecticut, slaps that ball back. Great play. Just a great play. And this is a, just a critical, critical drive for Judge Southern. Um, and then a critical defensive stand for the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils because here they are on the road. Everything is against them. They played a really good football game thus far. And now they have to bow their back to play defense. Second and ten. Ball will get put in the gut of Covington there, and he gets what he does. He gets positive yards. He's out to the 30, and that'll set up a third and about four. I, I love watching Covington run today. I don't know how he still has anything left in the tank. I, that's my question is wh where is he getting it from? He's got to be. Well, we know he's in great shape. He's in great shape. So we'll see if Joyce Southern is able to pick up this down. And if they don't, then there's no question you have to punt the football. Third and four, the crowd trying to will the Eagles to another first down. Need a score. Clark rolling right, looking that way. 
underthrows Smiley, but he still manages to get it for a first down. Well, you, you know, I don't think people understand how great a catch that is by Smiley. He's been under the center for the last three years, and now he's out at wide receiver making a play at the most critical state of the game. It's just, uh, just phenomenal. He's made the other big play of the game for Jordan Southern offense. He had, he had the best catch of the day in the end zone for the big touchdown to close out the first half. At that point, Georgia Southern had snared the lead for the first time, but they are trailing again. They have trailed for nearly all the game. Covington is going to go right. He tried to find something up the middle. It wasn't there. It's not to the right either, thanks to Gray Wax. I, I, I'm just, you know, and I don't want to beat the point, you know, and I don't know what the situation is, but I just think you got to get the ball in the hands of people who can go to this in Covington. Great selection. But then I think you got to get a, somebody else has to step up and make plays for Joy Southern, and we haven't seen that thus far with the skill position players. Irvin Campbell wide left. McCutcheon to the right. Backs in the eye again are Reddick and Covington. Play action to Covington. This is going to be a sack. Clark looks up, and all he sees is Ralph McKinley. Tight end got beat then. Just, just could not hold him. That's, that's number nine, Ralph McKinley. And uh, they list him as a running back, by the way. But uh, <laughs> I tell you what, he, oh, that is just something to see. He is all up the back of Travis Clark. That was just a great defensive stand. Now you're in a third situation, and forever. Third and forever. So now um, you don't want to do anything here because you still have time. Five minutes left. Clark is going to go short, and they're not. They're going to get two yards out of that. Gray Wax lifts his arm in triumph because the Eagles go into uh, Michael McIntosh there, get a gain of two on a third and 19 play. And I think with all the changes Jordan Southern has made, I think the one thing that has been critical is that Jason Foster has not been involved. And, and Jason Foster is just, I mean, he, the player of the year, freshman of the, he, when he won freshman of the year of the conference when he was not at quarterback. Under five minutes in the game, clock rolling, Georgia Southern trailing and punting. Ball is away. And it's short, but getting a good bounce for the Eagles. And the Blue Devils wisely stay far, far away from that one. They, they're trying to play smart now because they have the lead in four and a half minutes. They play good here. They could bleed it off. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 4.34 on the clock. The Blue Devils, visiting all the way from Central Connecticut State, lead the game 17-13 over the Georgia Southern Eagles. The Blue Devils have the ball, and they also have Ryan Holmes at quarterback. Ryan did not start the game. Aubrey Norris did. Norris was having some injury problems in the second half, and so Holmes has carried the, the load most of the way. I, I think you just got to give Coach McInerney a lot of credit. He's coming in, win, lose, or draw. He's coming. First of all, the preparation of his team has been outstanding. You can see his preparation offensively, defensively. He's been well. They've been well prepared, and they've executed relatively well to be on the road. I mean, and you're leading with under five minutes to go, about to go under four minutes, uh, on the road to a, one of the powerhouses in one double A, and so he has to be given a lot of credit. By the way, folks, just uh, in case you're curious about some of those scores we were reporting. Uh, Florida State eked that one out in the end, 24-17 over Troy. And I think eking out is the best way we can explain that one because they trailed we, most we of the game. We tracked that one all the way, too. They eked that one out. Yeah, that was, that's one of the one of the fascinating scores Look at the today. Coastal Carolina score. Coastal leading Wofford 34-24 at the end of three. Charleston Southern and the Citadel tied at 28 in the fourth quarter. Citadel not going down easily in the backyard. 17-13 is our score. The handoff to Hairston. Still fighting, still fighting. He is past the 45. My goodness, My what a run. Goodness, what a run. Hairston has been a fabulous I, I think back. he's hurt. I think he's hurt. Slow to get up, and he's going to take himself right out of the game. Not hurt badly, perhaps, hurt badly. But, uh, but not happy about not it. Not happy, but this is this has happened to Georgia Southern throughout the game. They make defensive stand, and then they come up with an effort like this where the offense seemed to have more wants than the defense at that time. So another first down. Every first down at this point, it, you know, he looks like he didn't make it all the way to the sidelines, getting some help. And they could use him right now. They That's it. They, right they need now. those first downs. Clock running at 317. 
Remember, folks, there's some new timing rules. Clock's going to run faster and faster. Yeah. A couple first downs here, and this one is going to get away from Georgia Southern. Three minutes. They're milking it all the way down on the play clock. Holmes has got his eyes on that all the way. This time it is a handoff up the middle. Well, what's going to happen? Georgia Southern have to start taking chances. They got to get out of the zone looks, go into a man look, send the safety, send the linebackers, and they have to stay disciplined, keep them contained, and keep everything inside of them. If they don't, they can get themselves they're in trouble. Now. Yeah, they, they definitely they're in a lot are. Of trouble. And I think what the fans are not used to is Georgia Southern. They, nobody really believes it because we've been in trouble before. I said we, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, that's okay, fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, keep we've, going. Been, we've been in trouble <laughs> before. And offensively, they've been able to pull it out. But here, I don't know if they believe they can pull it out offensively. It's under two and a half minutes now. Another first down, and one more first down might be all they need. Holmes, the handoff. Freeman working left. Rather, Harrison back on the field. And he got to start using timeouts. And yeah. Harrison is down again, slow to get up one more time. They knew they needed him, but he is... He's really trying to gut it out at this point. Yeah, you can see once again, he gets to the outside. Missed tackle there, have him in the backfield. Missed tackles has been the story for the defense. And the defense has not played bad, but if you're gonna win championship, if you're gonna contend for the conference in, this, in the Southern Conference, you gotta be a good tackling ball club. Coach Brian Van Gorder not seeing the debut he was hoping for. His team trails by four, 2-12 left in the game. And the Eagles have spent a timeout. They have only one timeout left. And they desperately need to be sure the Blue Devils do not get another first down. Yeah, if they don't stop them here, the game is essentially over. And who thought they'd see that? Well, probably a lot of folks in Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> and they've come down and done a great job. I mean, you got to give them and their staff and their institution a lot of credit. They have a good football. They have a good football team, and they play. Having that game under your belt, it makes an enormous difference for you as a ball club, I think. I think when you start off the season, both ball clubs playing their first game, it balances out. But when you bring a ball club in this stature and of this nature, you know, is ranked as high as they are in the mid-majors, I think you find that, you know, they are able to go on the road and win. So looking for a big third down play. The crowd trying to get one more big play out of the Eagles defense. They need it right here. Third and six, 2-12 left in the game. Holmes fakes to Hairston, keeps it himself. He had a man over there but wouldn't throw it. He's brought down for a loss. Oh, my goodness, what a good play. Well, Joy Southern stayed home. They stayed disciplined, but I think the key was there. He didn't go out of bounds. He, he didn't stay in bounds. I think that you see here they kept contained, kept contained, and yeah, it's went weird. out of bounds. And so if you go out of bounds, you give them a, it's essentially give them a timeout. Yeah, that's Larry Beard coming through with the, with the big play, and you're right. It saves the timeout because the clock would be still rolling now. McInerney can't be pleased with the way that one worked. The loss of yardage is not the big deal. The stoppage of the clock the stoppage is of the clock. 2 6 yeah. left in the yeah. game. I think, I think he's happy with his backup quarterback not turning the ball over, but oh. he can teach him some. A high rocket snap. Did a good job to get that one off. Foster runs up to make the catch at the 18. Good move. Gets him out to the 30. When, when, when he touches the ball, he, he's the guy that puts fear that he can go all the way. Just that little hesitation move, you think, oh, he's about to break it. So he's one of those players that wherever he touches the ball at, there's a potential touchdown involved with that play. Earlier in the game, we talked about how Clark erased the memory of his early fumble and interception by throwing the Hail Mary successfully. Now he can do something like that again. He can he can become a one game legend here if he can make something happen. McCutcheon. He got to get help from his from his players though. He has to get help from great ball. Put it right on his numbers. That's the second drop ball McCutcheon's had tonight. And in order for them to get over this hump, he got to get help from his teammates. Ball is right there, and the and the carom here is is really scary. Air, it's up in the air, and, and the air. Every, all the air got sucked out of the stadium for a second because everybody gasped. And one, and one color, God's yes. <laughs> second and ten, Clark 
Hands off to Covington. He's got room because they're playing soft, and he'll get across the 40. Good, good call. I think that, you know, you still have time. Clock's going to roll as soon, still, as, they as, soon as they get that ball set. As soon as they get it set. And one thing we've noticed is that they run a good two-minute drill. We saw that at the end of the half, and we're seeing it now. And it's amazing how people can move the ball in the two-minute drill where they can't move it the whole game. Clark in the shotgun. He's got Covington by his side. Clark drops back. He pitches up to Covington, who is dropped by Gray Wax immediately. And it was a stunt all the way. Gray Wax stepped up field, came inside, and it was a great stunt called by the defense. And I think that is a great defensive call. Number 44, Gray Wax for the Blue Devils, is a heck of a defensive player. And I'll tell you why, because every critical play, it's been his number we call. Right. And he stunned it right into that play. He's got a name that's kind of hard to say and hard to spell, but he's got a game that's good to watch, I'll tell you that. And, uh, you know, Joy Sullivan, you know, if you think, if you take away the Hail Mary pass, they have not thrown the ball vertical at all this evening. And when you don't throw the ball vertical, when you can see here, when you can see, well, we don't get to see it, but Ray Wax stunned it right into this play. And so, they, you know, they call it that an ET stunt where the tackle go upfield and the end come underneath that play. That's called an ET stunt. Did you know that? I did, I did not know that. I, I would have thought that was when they phoned home, the ET stunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time you see that, you're going to say, well, okay. me and my partner, we are partners. Uh, yes, we okay, are. Okay, we're partners. You know, but Joey Southern has not thought, even if you don't complete it, you got to have the vertical passing game to have some fear for the secondary. They have not been challenged, other than the Hail Mary. They have not been challenged vertical yet. Well, here's the deal. A minute and a half left in the game and no timeouts for Georgia Southern. Clark takes the snap, rolls to his right. He's going to have to take this one out of bounds. He doesn't get there. He's short of the first down. He's inbounds. The clock is running. They have no timeouts. They're going to have to line up really, really fast. Clock still rolling under a minute. Let's 15. hope he don't make this mistake of throwing the ball down in the ground because if he do, it's going to cost him a down and it's going to be fourth down. That's now. That's all and, he does. And they do it, and now it's fourth down. So I, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, that hurt you a little bit there, didn't yeah. it? It's not what you wanted to see. <laughs> because I'm not sure that. I mean, you lose a down. You want two you, downs to get those yards, not get, one. Because if you get first down, the clock will stop until they reset the chain. So that, in essence, give you a first, give you a stoppage of the clock, and then you still got time to set your formation. Well, so this, this is the the ball game for the moment, anyway. They're, if they get this, there'll be other pivotal plays in the now, minute left. And but the clock is running now, and they they've almost as acted. As, see, it's just a, a the play clock is down to two clock. seconds. It's just a technical mistake. They don't have any timeouts, and it's just the official. No, nope, they didn't miss it. They I didn't thought miss I, it, you know, the, it was at zero for a beat yeah. before it got called there. Right. And, so it, 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 it started with the throwing of the ball down, and I'm watching them signal the throw down. I'm going, no, that's not the right call. And, but then once again, Mark, you're going to get this in the first game. You know, I, I think what people have to understand is that, look, this is their first ball game. This is Clark's first ball game in Joyce Southern. The atmosphere was charged up, and you're going to make mistakes. And the question is, can you overcome them this ball game? Well, the, the other thing is, fourth and two, you can probably come up with a scheme to get Covington two yards. Right. Fourth and seven with the ball game on the line, Certainly. you got you got to have something special yeah. here. And, and the mistake was you, you use your down to stop the clock instead of. Clark's throw to McCutcheon is no good. And the Blue Devils begin their celebration because there's only a minute left in the game and they will have the ball. That was your color choking over here. <laughs> <laughs> and there you see too far for McCutcheon. One more time coming at us on the left side. Well, even if they'd have done that on third down, they'd have been okay. So certainly some technical, you know, just some, you know, some technical errors there in the whole makeup and and um, but I, I don't think that well, they have a decent ball club. They don't have a great ball club. They got some holes to work on. Um, and I don't first. Let's don't take nothing from Central Connecticut State. They played a heck of a ball game. They did from beginning they, to end. from beginning to end. And they did it with their backup quarterback coming in at a critical time in the game. But I thought Harrison played a great first half. You know, I tell you what, Aubrey Norris is back out there to take the kneel downs. And I think he, he deserves that. Certainly certainly does. He played a well of a ball game. He played the backup quarterback. They don't game. have to snap it again. They don't have to snap it They're again. They're done. You know, and I know the Georgia Southern fans are stunned. 
Uh, but Coach McInerney came in here and he and his staff put together a great game plan and then his players executed. So it's not enough just to have a game plan, but the execution of it. So with two seconds to go, there's the end of your ball game and the final score, an upset in Statesboro as the Blue Devils win 17-13. Coach McInerney and Coach Van Gorder shake hands. The visitors win in Statesboro. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Sorry, man.